Okay, fuck. My brain is like all over the place. I forgot to press record. I'm just like, huh. Okay. Anyways, just ignore my hair today. Um, it kind of. <laughs> it's a bit too short still for a proper bun. At least a good bun. Like I can, pr I can put like the top in a bun, but then there's like the rest of my hair. My What's it called? Like, uh, I know exactly what it's called. My brain just doesn't want to right now. But like, when, do, when, when does my brain ever want to? You know what? I'm just gonna move over. I, it's full of bobby pins and whatever. What isn't it full of? <laughs> okay, I gotta do this so I can actually hear myself. Wait, is it? Oh, we're just getting right into it. Cool. Damn that animation. <laughs> I've been uh, doing some deducing about how long this episode will take because there are like 10 chapters but the trials are split in two so I can't imagine that each trial will last for like an hour which they pretty much have been doing up until now because I, I uh that was that was also a thing I had to do I wanted to do where the hell is my book you know what god damn it I tried to plan things and then I just Forget stuff. It'd be like that, I guess. Um, you know what? It's probably fine. Ha! <sighs> so, where was I? My brain just completely blanked right now. What the fuck? Can we not? Book. Oh, yeah, 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 it was the, about the book. I just wanted to like write down like when I, I switched the chapters. That's what I wanted to do. Um, Cause I don't know. <laughs> I am deducing that this episode will take between six to eight hours, like a maximum of nine. That's my deduction. And that's just looking at how many parts there are, or how many chapters there are in this episode. There are ten. So, I believe that each part is not gonna be like an hour long. They're gonna be like 45 minutes long, so it's not gonna be quite ten hours. So I'm leaning more towards like eight, nine, unfortunately, which is like gonna be like, oh my god. But you know what? I can do it. I can do this. It's been two months. Since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. The science of deduction, yes. I've had offers, but none I took. Sir, you're a lawyer! <laughs> I'm like, there have been no trials. I've had offers, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sir. That is, until the day that girl showed up. February 22nd. Wait, wait, what day is it? Ah, oh, so close. <laughs> it's the 20th. Why do I come here to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. I'm like thinking of the voice. God. You know what? I'm uh, I'm just gonna start with my usual with my normal voice, and then I can like once I get comfortable, I'll settle into a voice. Also, I'm probably not gonna make Edgeworth British, which is what I did last time, just because uh, I don't know. It seems weird. <laughs> Where have you been? My sister's trial is tomorrow. I say I'm not gonna do a voice. Me does the voice anyway. Okay. 
Um, who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. It only matters who you are. The famous defense attorney Mia Fey. Ma'am, I don't think... <laughs> Oh, uh, you're not Mia Fey, are you? I'm sorry, but Miss Mia Fey no longer works here. So you are the coffee boy? I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right, right. Wait! You're the Phoenix Wright? The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yes, that's correct. <laughs> sure, we're Mia. <laughs> Can't you see my big titties? <laughs> Um, yes, that's correct. It wasn't Edgeworth who was murdered, though. That's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. You know, like, got a, got a big case of... of... depression, you know, like... <laughs> but you're Phoenix Wright, right? The undefeated defense attorney? Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try any... try elsewhere. Please, I'm out of time. But please, you have to help. It, it's my sister. Maya? Could it be? Okay, I'll hear you out. Really? Thank you so much. My name's Emma, Emma Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Scientific investigator? Alright. Emma, was it? So, you're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just... You seem kind of uh, jumpy or maybe just young? Young? I'll be 16 years old this year. Oh, I see. Wait, only 16? I'm set to be formally assigned to forensics in three more years. My work is becoming quite well known. At my age, no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position then? Well, legally speaking, I guess you call me an 11th grader. But I'm ready to do my job, at my age, no less. Great, another future professional in training. Forensics! <laughs> yes! This case is also kind of different from the other ones because there are like some, uh, new gameplay elements, I guess you could say. In this case. So, what's this about a case? You said the trial's tomorrow? My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't stab someone with a knife. She wouldn't. So, it's a murder case. I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness. Just talk to her. You have to talk to her. Right. I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring Mia Fey, but that's interesting. How would she know Mia? My sister asked for Mia specifically. This Mia Fey person was a few years below her in school. So they went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defense attorney. And, um, well, I need one. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Now that you mention it, I guess it is more of a woman's name than a man's. Well, it's nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Huh? But, but she's my only family. Your only family? W what about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. So you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up then? Excuse me? I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Ma'am, you're 16. Also, I like that Edgeworth and Gumshoe are already in my court record. Love that. Still, it's good to have a goal, albeit a very unusual one. I believe investigations should be done scientifically. Don't you? Uh, yeah. Sure can't falter for a lack of au autism. <laughs> enthusiasm! 
<laughs> Why do I see any anything that ends with zm? I'm just like autism. <laughs> Something last time I too too I I misread as autistic or something and I was like, okay, girl I know you're autistic but not everything is about autism. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. Your sister? I've been doing research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. Yes, she's very cute. Rose shade glasses, yeah. Rose tinted glasses. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. Guess I should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister. Alright. Hmm, I wonder what's wrong with Emma. She got quiet all of a sudden, as soon as we arrived. God, I thought I told you I didn't want visitors. S sorry, ma'am. It's j just your sister. No excuses. Or did you not want to raise this year, hmm? Uh, understood, ma'am. What, what, what was that about? Hi, Lana. Funny. I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing? Look, I didn't want to come here either, okay? But your trial's tomorrow and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Hey, how do you know my- how do you know me? Mia mentioned you. I've heard quite a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, what exactly is it that you do? My name is Lana. Lana Sky. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. Y you're a prosecutor? Two sisters, one a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? Emma. Lana. I mean, they're just like... Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? <sighs> There's something you should know from the start, which is the suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Huh? Wait, but the suspect, the suspect is... Me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? The crime took place yesterday, February 21st at 5.15pm. That's quite specific. It wasn't the witnesses to... I- it was in the witnesses' this deposition- deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Um, I- that was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. The prosecutor's office, huh? In your subordinate's car? Car trunk. Classy. I was arrested on the spot, caught red-handed as it were. Well, that's just great. So, who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. I suppose the correct term is detective. A detective? Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. By you? Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. See. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh. What, Mr. Wright? What does it mean? Well, it means... The police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means at their disposal to do so. This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn. So you're the chief prosecutor? That is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by the prosecutors in this dr district. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do the job and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities in a nutshell. It's an awfully large nutshell. Still, I'm a little surprised. 
I would think you'd recognize the district's chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright. Uh-huh. In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana? What happened to your hand? Oh, this? I cut myself by accident when I stabbed him, that is. Huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. How am I supposed to defend this? Time to change the subject. Wait. She was in the class ahead of Mia, wasn't she? Um, you were in school with Mia, correct? A few years above her? Emma told you that too, did she? Well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with Mia. Hey! He was in law school. I was in my third year and she was auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different? She was strong. She'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. That was probably why she was attracted to me. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me? Intellectually attracted. Lana was on was top of her class in school. Sure. Sure. Intellectually. Let's just say it was intellectually. <laughs> don't ask me why I said it like that. I don't know. <laughs> I was the best there was. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, so, 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 she wasn't a lesbian. <laughs> they were classmates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing pretty good in school too, by the way. Sounds a bit different when Emma says it. Well, Mr. Wright? Excuse me? As you can plainly see, I am admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say, there's no way you can take this case. None. But, Lana! Why? Why are you doing this to me? You never think of anyone but yourself! I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know. So, how can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I, I hate you, Lana. Mr. Wright? Y yes. I believe our discussion here has ended. The rest, I leave to you. Um... You mean you're requesting my services as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed. After all, the case is over. Right. I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of, bottom of this. Lana has confessed to the crime, yes. But something doesn't fit. It's that look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on here. And I'm going to find out what. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? About what? My sister. She's not always like that, you know? I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. Heartbroken, pretty much. She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle, always smiling. Everybody liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. I think maybe she... well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. <laughs> this is, it really isn't good timing, but oh god, whenever they say prosecutor, all I can think of is Prosecco or... How, how do you say that? Prosciutto? Prosciutto? Something like that. I don't know. I don't speak uh, Italian. <sighs> Let's go check out this underground parking at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Okay. So this is the lot where it all happened. Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey everyone, keep up the good work! Hey, what are you thinking? Well, they are going to be my co-workers three years from now after all. No harm, no harm in saying hello. 
Actually, there is. You know, attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes. I'm trying to not stand out too much here, see? Hey there, you expecting to go unnoticed here, partner? A partner? Oh god. How do we even do a cowboy accent? I don't want to just like make him the same as Lana Hart. <laughs> because they're not the same at all. What do we have here? Looks like a bambina got loose from the ranch and is up to no good. Folks gotta learn to keep them do doggies? Tie down, partner. Doggies? Do something. Mr. Marshall! Marshall? Looks more like a sheriff to me. Looky here, Bambina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? Strike? This is our claim, our territory, with a mother load of evidence. If you're fixing to mess with that with, with what's so ours, you'll regret it, partner. You know what dreams the cacti out in the desert dream? You want to? What's this guy talking about? You head along home now. Happy trails, Bambina. Was that a hombre, a friend of yours? Dude wanted to be a cowboy. <laughs> uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he's a detective. Who thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems. I see this immediately. What's this? Wallet? Um, excuse me, officer. Wait! What are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm handing it over to the police. <laughs> Dude wanted to be a cowboy and his police, yeah. I don't believe it. This is real basic. Anything at a crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. How is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. I'm called to duty already, and at my tender age. Here, I'll teach you the trick to examining evidence in detail, okay? By the way her eyes are sparkling, I can tell she's been waiting for this. Okay, okay now. Look at the court record. You have to be sure to examine evidence carefully on all sides. This is where we first get to use this, but it... I'm pretty sure it's not like included in the other games, which is like really weird. And I can't remember if like these characters even come back at all, like until like at least the investigations game. <sighs> I have to be sure to examine evidence carefully on all sides. Now let's start examining from every angle. We we can Oh look! I think there might be a clue here. You should check it out with the press. Okay, cool. This... This is an ID card. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. ID number 58421891. See? Well, isn't scientific investigation useful? I guess. Though I don't see what science has to do with it. I like how up until this point, they just like pick up whatever, like, they just get like whatever piece of evidence they need and they don't look at it. They just like, okay. <laughs> they don't like actually like try to like look around the thing. They just take the evidence, face value. <laughs> science is opening a wallet. Oh yeah, big science right there. Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I guess I got to be on my toes from now on. No, give me that ladder, step ladder. Aha, a ladder. Um, that's a step ladder. What's the difference in scientific terms, please? Okay, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm gonna search up <laughs> ladder. Uh, step ladder <laughs> difference. <laughs> What is the difference between a ladder and a stepladder? In general, a ladder needs to be supported against something. A stepladder doesn't need external support, it stands by itself. So that is in fact a stepladder. Cool, we got that. 
<laughs> we finally got that sorted out. <laughs> I like how you, <laughs> you search up ladder and step ladder difference and like the second second result is ladder versus step ladder, ace attorney wiki. <laughs> Okay, cool. That was very interesting. Today's... <laughs> Finally learned something new. Well... Wow. Scientific, huh? Look at the basic nature of things, Mr. Wright. This all seems so horribly familiar somehow. Uh, mm, mm. Oh, ho, 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 ho. What's this? No time to waste. Let's get hunting for clues. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Well, partner, looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. Sheriff. Like I said before, this here is all clean. Best be mostly in the wall, unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. Ah, scary. Could you tell us one thing? Who owns that car? Well, well, the little filly's got a good nose on her. You want to know who rides that red Mustang with the body in her saddle, huh? Please. No problem, partner. About time for vittles anyway. Get yourself to the saloon up on the 12th floor of, of the prosecutor's office. I just found you a cerveza you like. Cerveza? Something like that. So are you leaving your beer? Prospector's office? Where does this guy think he is? Oh, did it say prospector? <laughs> I didn't even see that. And when, for that matter? Note to self, look up Vittles Saloon Cerveza. Maybe we should check out room 1202, the high prosecutor's office. In any case, stay away from the car. You can look around here all you like, just keep your paws off our claim. Right, great. <sighs> great. Maybe there are some clues around here, Mr. Wright. Let's check it out. Excuse me? Are you two all set? Us? What's this? She couldn't be. You're selling lunches? Here. This is a crime scene. Hello, half and half, was it? Uh, oh, uh, thanks. And you, sir? I yes? Some crunchy goodness coming at you. Uh, thanks. Str interesting way of doing business. This area is off limits to anyone without clearance. Especially passersby. Where are you, officers? Uh, no, but... You... you don't exactly look like the time to have clearance. Well, that's hardly a way to greet someone. Even if my days as the cough-up queen are over. C cough up Uh-huh. You know, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burned into my eyes, you might say. Yes, all the sordid secrets. Secrets? Dear me, you're a slow one, aren't you? I'm referring to the murder, the stabbing of that detective. What? A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. You mean you're the witness? My sister was talking about? Please. Oh no. Please, cough up queen, tell us what happened. The name is Angel Star. Don't you go forgetting it. Or before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Yes, ma'am. Yipes, she means it. The chat is killing my cool. What do you mean? What about the chat? Uh, somehow I knew. Yesterday was a day of destiny. I knew something was going to happen. It's slow. Ah. Uh, just like I know that the daily special on Friday every week is salmon. 
Destiny was yesterday special for some reason? You're a defense attorney, right? You should know then. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of inequity. Evil ones? Prosecutors, they have no qualms at all about blackening the name of innocence. And yesterday they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They give an award for King of Prosecutors. What a farce. So she's saying there was some sort of prosecutor's convention yesterday. It was... I was almost compelled to lace their lunches with something foul. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this, um, evil? Young miss, mock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call me the cough-up queen. Ew. The most heinous of all the evil ones, the one they awarded yesterday. It was in his car that they found the body. Proof that he devours the evilest lunches of all. Really? Really what? I'm totally confused. One thing is clear. This lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. So what exactly was it that you witnessed, Miss Star? It was a fascinating spectacle to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. To see Lana Sky wield that knife. So her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. I you mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties through this world being cruelly cut still rings in my ears. And the rhythmic beat of Lana Sky's knife. Wait a second, you know Lana Sky? Huh, of course. It's quite a feat becoming chief prosecutor. How many lunchboxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. Now why would this pretty lady, lunch lady, know the chief prosecutor's name? Okay, let's ask her about herself. Um, could we ask you a bit about yourself, Miss Star? I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are a hit here. Why not make the lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? N no. Only true connoisseurs can understand. The kind you can only tell someone who has tried General Tso's trilo tri 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 <laughs> Is it trilobite? Trilobite? Something like this. Clearly prosecutors are her enemies. Oh yeah, gotta know your enemies. That's what you said. Uh, never mind. You win. I don't even want to appreciate part of it. Trilobite's flavor. I don't know if it's trilobite or trilobite. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. I your boyfriend? See the security room over there? The glass walled booth? I sell my lunches and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. Since you're here anyway, I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. So to scientifically analyze the data available so far, you and Miss Star are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. Useful analysis. Not. Yeah, I know there they are fossils, but I don't know how to like say them. <laughs> Let's say the word. You know, I feel like the camera is like fucking miles away. Trilobites are a group of extinct marine artiopodon arthropods that form the class Trilobita? Tri Trilobita? What? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I knew I knew there were fossils. I just don't know how to pronounce the word. <laughs> like, trilobite? Trilobite? Who the fuck knows? Oh yeah, thank you for checking for me. Did you have a bad experience with the prosecutor, Miss Star? I sense some hostility. Hostility? Huh, <laughs> perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike, and the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like ten-day-old clams in the ch in the chowder. 
I wonder if Miss Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. That'd be a sure cause of food poisoning, scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking, cough up queen. <laughs> I thought she was just lunch vendor, but now I'm not so sure. About this card. So, trilobite. Though that looks more like trilobate. <laughs> but I know it's bite. Mm. Lunchland vendors only, only accept cash, no cards. Especially not a card belonging to someone else. No, no, this isn't a credit card, it's an ID card. It belongs to a detective. And you're showing this to me, the lunch lady, why? It's like showing a fine honeyed ham to a detective. Why do I feel like I'm... Why do I always feel like I'm being mocked? Okay, whatever, you know what? Uh, let's go to high prosecutor's office. Gee, I wonder what could this, what could, who, who's, whose office could this possibly be? Hmm. Strange. Do you, do you have any, any guesses as to whose office this is? It must be an Edgeworth fan. This is the kind of room that just screams, I can do the job. Quite a change from your office, really. Thanks. Look, look! There's a trophy or something here. A trophy? What? That shield? Okay. It takes real nerve to display stuff like this. Whoever's office this is, they must be a real stuck-up jerk. Phoenix Wright. You never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? That voice. Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? Ah! M Mr. Edgeworth! Do you know him from somewhere? It looks on the couch. Yeah, I know. It's not displayed. Of course! I'm his biggest fan! My sister introduced us once and... Right. Her sister is the chief prosecutor, after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you. I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. Edgeworth, no! N no, did I... No! It was just Mr. Wright here, he... Hey, don't blame me! We're just here to investigate a murder case. Murder? body was found in this nasty bright red sports car in the parking lot. Hmm. That will be my car. What of it? Oh, I didn't even see that Fleur was here! Because you both had great names. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Hi, Fleur. Thank you for dropping by. What? Your car? Say one thing, she certainly can't scream. Yeah, I'm not gonna scream. <laughs> no worries. So, the body was found in your car. Go ahead, say it right. I think I did it, don't you? After you went through all that trouble to help me last year, no less. No, we don't think you did it. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Emma, <laughs> I don't think you... Uh, wait, no, she didn't do that. I mean, yeah, I don't think she's aware of what she's saying. Wait. So you're the chief prosecutor's little sister, then? Yes, sir. Emma Sky. It, um, it's nice to meet you again. Now that didn't sound forced at all. Ah, now I remember. You've really grown. I'll admit it. It was a surprise for me, too. 
think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. More surprising still. I'm being forced to prove my superior's guilt. I can understand. Wait, what did you say? Lana Skye is the chief prosecutor, the top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. Okay, so prosecutors can't prosecute themselves, but defense attorneys can defend themselves? Sure, that adds up. You? Mr. Edgeworth. To be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumors. You've heard the rumors about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time when there weren't rumors about this guy. Forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Thanks to you, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of last year. However, there are some who say I am the one responsible for the current incident. What? That's crazy! Hmm. Some people need, a ver need very little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life, impossible to stop. But... Some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like this. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There's gotta be a story behind this one. Chief Prosecutor Sky? Yes, we f first worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago? I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Since then, I always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. Mistaken. Cave of killer. Yes, exactly. That's it. <laughs> Mistaken? Why? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then, why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, she stabbed him with my knife. What? What? Mr. Edgeworth? Your knife was the murder weapon? To be specific, it was the knife I keep in the toolbox in the trunk of my car. Edgeworth? What? Are you sure you didn't do it? <laughs> Who keeps a knife in their car? I mean... Yeah, it can't be helpful in accidents. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I'm pretty sure... I don't know, you're like uh, required to have like some kind of tools in your car, I believe. Well, also creeps. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, can't he take a joke? You have a strange sense of humor, Mr. Wright. Alright. Come on. Let me just snoop around your office a little bit. What's the steel samurai bitch doing over here? My, my, my. What an amazing bouquet. Just right for Mr. Edgeworth. I like that even the bouquet has a cravat. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> no kidding. Hey, there's a card on it. Back from the dead. Wendy. Ah. Wendy? I've heard that name somewhere before. Gee. I wonder. <laughs> and beside it, a giant steel samurai. Wow, I want one. Huh? Something written on the bottom of his foot. Between a rock and a hard place. Wendy. Wendy? Is she Mr. Edgeworth's fiance? It's a, it's a plant worth. Um, I don't think so. Because that would be me, but you know, we don't really talk about that that much. <laughs> I hope this was done on purpose, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I am Edgeworth's fiance. <laughs> I 
I hope this was done on purpose. Like the blue surrounded by red pieces. Nick is jealous, always. Hey, a chessboard! I'm not too up on my chess, but it looks like blue's in a bit of a tight spot. The red knights have surrounded the blue, blue pawn. Huh? Those horses are mon mounted knights. Their swords have really sharp edges. And check out that poor pawn. His head is kind of spiky. <laughs> it is done on purpose. Wow. Nice chess symbolism. Yeah, of course. Kind of reminds me of you. Mr. Edgeworth must be an avid chess player. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Edges surrounding a pawn with spiky hair. Nah, it's nothing. <laughs> Let's look at this. I've been wondering, what the heck is this? It has a big K on it. Mm, prosecutors. Huh? What's that? It's the King of Prosecutors trophy. King of Prosecutors? It's a great honor. They send that shield to the best prosecutor each year. What? So? So that K, that's... K stands for King? Yeah, you got a problem with that? I didn't design the thing. King of Prosecutors. Kind of like employee of the month, only better. I want to look at it a bit. Something at the bottom, what's this? Hey, check it out, there's a metal plate here. Hmm, it looks like the names of all the previous recipients are engraved on it. Wow, one guy is listed a bunch of times. Von Karma, I guess he must be a foreigner? Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Well, wherever he's from, he must have been an amazing prosecutor. Um... I don't know, he... What I do know, though, is that he had an amazingly small bladder. That I know. Yes, I'm still keeping this going, okay? <laughs> I'd like to meet this Mr. Von Karma sometime. When she says it, his name does have kind of a ring to it. I guess that's the only thing. Did Carmen get a trophy for smallest bladder? <laughs> oh, I haven't looked at the knife. This must be the victim's blood, right? Either that, or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. What's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this anyway? Hey, maybe he spends his weekends roughing it in the wild. <laughs> My brain can't compute with what you just said. <laughs> Edgeworth? In the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I always pictured him as an outdoorsman. Now there's a scary thought. <laughs> oh, for sure. Okay, it's just the blood. He was. <laughs> but actually, um... Oh, I can look at my own. Oh. Look at this high quality. Wait, I want to, I want to rotate you the right way. Hold on. Eh. Eh. I want to save it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I like that feature of this case. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a shame that it doesn't come back until uh, Apollo Justice, though. Ah, oh, damn. My, I just can't read this. <laughs> it's so funny how you can see this so clearly and then it's just blurry. A name and ID number are written here. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. I already read that ID. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly. They're the reason we have a written language in the first place. True. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. ID Yabadab. See? 
Wouldn't that be better? Yabba dab? Well, it does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point! <laughs> Maybe Phoenix has really bad eyesight. Yes. Exactly why he finds like small details of stuff all the time. Really bad eyesight. Makes sense. Also, I fixed like some um, settings on my camera. I don't know if it's like too dark or what. I can probably fix it really easily. So if like you don't like how my camera or my face cam is looking right now, then I can fix it. I don't know. I, it, it looks kind of dark. What do y'all think? Doesn't take much to amuse her. Actually, I want to... this. Wow, this jacket is even lacier than his usual ones. This must be his lucky trial jacket. Lucky jacket, right. I've never seen him wear it. I'm sure there's a story behind why it's in the frame. Maybe I'll be naughty and take a picture. She's getting way too excited about this. Work desk. It's quite tidy as one might s expect. What a nice desk. Easy to use and easy on the eyes. It's polished so well I can see my own reflection. Strange. Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? Maybe I'll take that name plaque as a souvenir. Don't. He'll sue you. <laughs> oh, cute! What a pretty tea set! I go more for the instant tea bags myself. Amazing! The drawer below is filled with packets of tea leaves. They're all sorted by place of origin and flavor. Look at this royal blend! What an exquisitely splendid concoction! Such a thing is taking a hobby too far. Let the man like his tea. Please. <laughs> Whoa, these are all case, ca case files? They're stacked up to the ceiling. There's even a ladder. Odd. I thought Edgeworth wasn't good with heights. He must have someone get them for him. Strange. I should have just picture Detective Gumshoe. He must study these case reports so closely. He's so cool. I wouldn't say that if you saw him sweating bullets up on that ladder. <laughs> Phoenix, please! <laughs> Be nice to your boyfriend, I beg. A sofa. Let's look at the sofa. Why not? Mr. Edgeworth has such a comfy sofa. Sofas like this make me want to curl up and take a nap. Then he pours over his case files here until the wee hours of the morning. Then he takes off his jacket, rolls up his sleeves, and goes to sleep using his arms as a pillow. I don't believe it. She's actually daydreaming about Edgeworth working. I bet in the morning he has sofa hair and little creases in his cheek from the seams. He's so cool. Sofa hair was cool? Whoa, what a view. It must be nice to have an office on the 12th floor. I guess she would feel important. Incidentally, were you to jump out this window, the time until impact with the ground would be... Got it. Approximately 3.23 seconds. That's handy to know. <laughs> Phoenix is fucking ready to just fucking yeet himself out of that fucking office. <laughs> Let me give you this. So basically this says you were the best of the best last year, huh? You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why's that? I had to go to the police department to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes, right next to the police station downtown. You've been there, haven't you? Where Detective Gumshoe works? Yeah. Um, I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? He get out the window. I mean, he got embarrassed in front of his husband. 
What does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, right. He doesn't seem too concerned about his award, for better or for worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Maybe we should ask him more about yesterday. Actually, I want to show him my badge. I once dreamed of being a defense attorney a long time ago. What? You wanted to be a defense attorney, Mr. Wedgeworth? Yep, my path is laid out clearly before me. I have no time to reflect on what might have been. Say, Edgeworth, I was wondering about this. <clears throat> Mr. Wright! Are you sure you should be showing that to Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, he'll take it for sure, won't he? <sighs> I wish I could be on the same side as Mr. Edgeworth. But then my sister would be found guilty. If she sighs any deeper, I'm going to start getting depressed. Okay. Could you tell me more about yesterday, the day of the murder? Yesterday was the annual cleaning day at the prosecutor's office. Annual? <laughs> cleaning day? Working with the police department, we sort and file all evidence for solved cases. We call it evidence transferal. Oh, that kind of cleaning. I was really confused for a second. <laughs> But I never, I never got any feedback on my camera, on my face cam. Should it be brighter? Or what? Wiping your hands of cold cases, in other words. Oh, and another thing. A ceremony was held at the police department. There's an annual review and awards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. It looks all right. Really? I might make it a bit brighter because it looks really weird on my phone at the very least. I look like really dark and just... Bleh. It looks fine on my monitor, but like on my phone, it's like really dark and I don't like it. I don't like it very much. Let's see here what we got. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, that's like way too red. Hold on. I remove that and. Up the contrast a bit. Hold on, let me look at the. <laughs> let me look at my phone here for a second. Oh my god, it's so far behind. Is it paused? No, it's not freaking paused. Hmm. More gamma? More contrast. I actually have features now. What would you say? I was trying to picture Edgeworth in like an apron for cleaning. Um, well, I don't think he's ever been in an apron. Like Levi style. I'm gonna be real, I don't know who that is. <laughs> and that's when you got the shield? I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 5.12. That's... Very precise. People like myself and Mr. Edgeworth pride ourselves on our precision, Mr. Wright. No, please, little faith, faith in my mem memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. So my sister's like, I'm actually really fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is the parking stop from the underground lot. The murder took place around 5.15. So the murder happened right after you got back. What right? I'd appreciate it if you direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. Um, oh god. Excuse me! Oh god. D damn it, I can't like make voice cracks. How am I gonna do that? Uh. 
Don't suspect your husband of murder. It's already happened once. It's probably gonna happen again. But is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth. What is it? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Report? What? Did you find new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation is going at all. Uh, Sky, sir? No, sir! No name of that kind, sir. Not in this report, sir. Hey, Bengi, remember in like the first case when you were like so- He says sir so many times. He said that about Gumshoe, I believe, when he was like presenting the case in the courtroom. <laughs> I think I just heard Edgeworth's lid blow. Mr. Edgeworth's lid isn't on very tight, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated. Sir, but sir! I'm just following orders, sir. They told me to bring this to you. I wasn't aware of the particulars of your arrangement, but... Give me your name. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, sir! Meekins, sir! Officer Meekins! Right, Officer Meekins. Take your report and leave. And good luck with that race ne next month. Oh, but, sir, I, I didn't know. Poor guy. Looks like he was absent on the day they gave out brains and good luck. Uh, God, I want to... Meh. How awful is this gonna be if I, like... <laughs> oh god, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Like, my hair is fucking filled with this. Wait, this is like, kind of like a... A phoenix kind of hairstyle. <laughs> but also not, because god, my hair is a mess. You know what? Screw it. I actually originally put... So many, um... Bobby pins in my hair, but you know what? I don't like it. You're Phoenix. <laughs> Listen, there was another time um, when I like actually got way closer to it on accident. That was kind of funny. Wonder if I can find the picture for it. Do I have? Yep, I still have some in the back. <laughs> Look at this fucking hair. What the hell? I mean, it's, it's fine. I just don't like how long it is on the sides and like how light it is. <laughs> because I fucked up. <laughs> but I can't really do anything about it. At least not now. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, I'm back to the game. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. I caught me off guard. As you can see, I'm busy. I may leave now. Let's do what he says, Mr. Wright. Yeah, now you're Sonic. <laughs> it, 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 it's even worse with the blue hair. The victim was a detective from the same department as that patrolman just now. Go down to the police department. You can ask more there. Uh, thanks. He seemed to have finally calmed down at least. He's like hyper aware because Phoenix is in his office. <laughs> it's not actually this blue, it's like my light is making it look more blue. It's a bit more like grayish. It's actually supposed to be a purple. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> We're finally here. Why would they put the police department so far away from the prosecutor's office? It's me. That took almost 30 minutes by taxi and traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, huh? I've only ever been to criminal affairs next door. Hmm? Hold on, what's that? <laughs> Disturbing, why does it undulate like that? Oh wait, I know, this is... The blue badger. They're trying to make him the m police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright. 
You sure know a lot about the police. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the blue badger. Who's that next to him? Someone appears to be dancing with the blue badger. Uh-oh, he noticed me. He sure is running over here fast. Hey, pal. What are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? You're the blue badger! <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, well... Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. Hey! I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. Well, that's a bit too late for that now, isn't it? Why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. She says she summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But what if she's not telling the truth? Yes, well, no. Come on, pal, there's plenty of evidence against her. How much I wonder how often he cuts his jaw, yeah. Every day he makes the same mistake. <laughs> What if the evidence was faked? Hey pal, can I speak to you for a second? Same place too, yeah. He does the same mistake every single day. Kind of impressive, yeah. Have me? Why is this little girl so peeved at me? She's a relative of the suspect. She's Lana Sky's sister. Whoa, the chief's prosecutor's little sister? Just please investigate this car case carefully, okay? Scientifically. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like faked. Huh? It's just... It's a sensitive issue with us these days. I just did it once and forgot about it. <laughs> that's also... That's also very likely. So, what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, nothing really. You kicked me out of criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe, what'd you do this time? What do you mean, this time? Then what happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, with my sister's case and all. It's true, I've never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest ranked people are being led into criminal affairs now. The lowest ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us rank and file detectives in at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? So, anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting the badger dance down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? The chief of police himself is directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall... Now that I think about it, Emma did seem to know that Marshall guy. A patrolman in charge of the crime scene. It's unheard of, pal. Yeah, let me look at this. Whee! It's blank. Miles Edgeworth. 1712. This is stated the day of the crime. The murder took place three minutes after Edgeworth parked his car. If only he was held up at a couple extra red lights. He wouldn't have been caught up in this whole affair. Perhaps. It just goes to show you how you never know what'll happen when you run a yellow light. Well, that's... that's assumptions. <laughs> Do I show you anything? Oh, I believe I can- no, I, I can't. I still can't present uh, profiles. That's dumb. The knife? I'm in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I didn't mean- I mean, sure, of course, someone else really did it. Someone who must have, um, someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. 
car and the knife do seem a little too well organized to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. What could have happened? We have to find out a little more about what's going on with Edgeworth. Hey, that's it! It's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got yesterday. Are you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Ah, congratulations! I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, well, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. Ah, okay. I was proud of Mr. Edgeworth for winning that award. Even with all the naysayers in the prosecutor's office. Naysayers? Must be because of the rumors. Yes! There we go. He's in a tough spot again. Again? Yeah, we don't need we don't need to be reminded of this. <laughs> well it all started with the murder of that defense attorney Hammond. Mr. Edgeworth was found innocent. Listen, pal. There have always been rumors about Mr. Edgeworth. Forging evidence, making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there were always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. They were all practically shouting. But there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties with the department higher-ups. It's only natural that people would be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case has started a new rumor. People say the only reason he took, the took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. What? But I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this for all of us. Cool, can I go... Uh, where can I go? Uh, I was wondering about that. What, the dancing blue badger? It's my masterpiece. You made this effective gumshoe? The chief threw us to together some designs and I just did my thing, pal. Nice work. It's battery powered, so it can go anywhere. There's no switch, so it just dance, dance, dances until the batteries die. Poor Blue Badger, faded to dance until he drops. Look, that patrolman is saluting the other guy. He must be a detective. And then I said, hey, you do that, your soup will get cold, buddy. Well, that's hilarious, sir. I laughed so hard I cried. I guess he wasn't saluting, he was wiping tears from his eyes. They make a good pair. Phoenix is like, yeah, sh those two? I ship them. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else here unless, no. Oh, actually, yeah, I can, uh... So, detective, okay, cool, never mind. Nothing here. Detention center, center. And everyone parking lot. No, without move. I mean, examine. That's what I mean. Can I not? Well, I can't go over to the crime scene anymore. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay, let's look at uh, look around here. What we got? A door. Look, a door! This must mean something. I'm not sure that doors mean anything. No, it won't open. A mysterious lock. I fail to see what's mysterious about it. Yes, you're right. We need to learn to enjoy life more. Let's finish our investigation first, shall we? Here, a phone. Let's see if it works. 
Hey, don't touch stuff we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears! No, my ears! Maybe it's due to the barometric pressure. What is she babbling about? Hey, what'd you just say? See, you can hear just fine. The phone's broken. He really does need to learn to enjoy life. Thank God he is edgy. Pretty much, yeah. An oil drum. Looks like it's filled with water. It's heavy. I can't even budge it. The drum over here is on its side. Wait, I know. I'll hide in here and do a stakeout. I think you'll probably just get arrested. In fact, you may not even have to hide in the drum to get arrested. What? I'm not suspicious. Okay, I guess that's, that's all that is of interest. Something like that. Angelbert's office, nothing there. Do we have to show you something? Knife. Nope. I don't care about what she has to say. Nope. Okay, cool. But the door was orange? What door? This door? Where is it orange? Or what are you talking about? I'm confused. <laughs> Metal left. Huh? More left here. This is where the cars leave the lot. The arrows on the ground makes it look more like an entrance. It's still not orange. Where are you seeing orange? Am I colorblind? What are you talking about? It's plainly an exit. Maybe it's both. Kind of a dual purpose. Aha! The theory of relativity. What? Uh, I got to write this down. Ah, uh, hey, hey, Mr. Wright. Maybe you know... Was Mr. Relativity German or was he British? Mr. Relativity? Are you sure that was his name? Ugh, God. I don't think there's anything more to do here. Oh! The magnifying glass. Oh, yeah, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like anything that is like important to the case, you know. Um, Detective Gumshoe, what can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey pal, this is a detective's ID card. You can't just keep that. You have to turn it into the police. It's people like you that get me into so much trouble all the time. I mean, Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Hmm, let's see, Bruce Goodman. Goodman. Sounds familiar. Nah, my mistake. But didn't you work together with him in criminal affairs? Whoa! Now I remember! Bruce Goodman! He's the victim! That's what I thought. Can you tell us more, Detective Gumshoe? Okay. That was what I had to do. I figured it was that, but like, she stopped me from showing the fucking card so many times now. I figured, nah, surely it can't be the fucking card. So, this ID card belonged to the victim? He was a detective like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm, don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. 
There was an evidence transferal for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transferal? Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too. But Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but... Uh, word is that Chief Prosecutor Sky called him out there to the parking lot. And Lana's confessing as much. And that's all I know about that. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you. Why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? We met the guy who is. What was his name? The guy in the parking lot? Could that be Officer Officer Marshall? He was appointed directly by the Chief of Police. Officer Marshall? Is he some kind of Wild West Sheriff or something? Nah, Jake Marshall's just a reg regular officer. From West LA. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal. Let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show them this and they'll let you examine the crime scene. Maybe. I'd be surprised if this gets us anywhere. Just act like you're supposed to be there and nobody will look at you twice, pal. Well... Thanks, Gumshoe. Wait, let me look at it, actually. What's this say? Hey, look here. It looks like something's been crossed out. Maybe it was a letter of s or something to de Detective Gumshoe. Let's see, annual bonus, twenty dollars. Mm, I think a couple zeros are missing. No, that sounds about right. At least in that detective's case. Maybe I should rethink my career as an investigator. No, Emma. Cool. Wow. That's sad. This is a fucking yearly bonus. 20 bucks? Wow. Okay. Looks like the investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry, it looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. See you in my dreams tonight then, baby. Okay, that's, that's Angel. I, no, that's not. Wait. Yes, it is. I was confused because like, huh? <laughs> that bonus though, mm, yes. Those crisp 20 bucks. For a year. Oh, still here? Ah, uh, hello. Why the surprise looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too. What happened to the security guy? A security guard. Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a doggy? <laughs> That's lost its herd. Then it has to be a doggy. But why is it why is it a single G? I don't understand. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. Okay, you know what? Let's just give you this. Would you mind reading this for me? What's this? I warn you. Fan letters to me go right in the spit tune. It's a letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe? Ah, that old cow dog. Hmm. He holding a birthday party or something? Huh? Look where it should say letter of introduction. It says invitation. Ah, I think he just miswrote it. Why am I getting all defensive here? No worries. This proves it's from Detective Gumshoe better than a blood test. Guess I better let you in then. Thank you, Officer Marshall. Oh, that's right. He's a patrolman, not a de not a uh, not a detective. Which reminds me. Hey, wait a sec. Isn't the crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or higher? Well, folks, the clues are calling. Welcome to our goal strike. Be like the settler. Strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hootenanny. Move to south. Police investigations are like settling land. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. Crumpled and discarded. No, that's so mean. <sighs> okay, let me just talk to this bitch now. Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? 
Bruce Goodman. He was a detective, right? Well, well, aren't you a feisty dog here now? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 5.15. The smiling Madonna told me the tale. I think he means the witness, Miss Angel Star. One stab to the chest, fine piece of work. This here is the autopsy report. Uh, that's due to a lot of blood, one knife wound. Is it one knife wound? It's not just like... A stab wound. Like, it like, specifically says like, one, you know? I mean, technically they mean the same, but just like... There can be like so many more... If it was like, he died to a knife wound, or he died to like, a stab? Or something like that, that would be confusing. If it was like... One... If it specified one, it would be way more easier for like that second case. You know. Anyways, I'm rambling. Died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Is my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambino. Chief Pros Prospector Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So there's no motive. Goodman wasn't particularly good. Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. That's one reason why I didn't do much work with the chief prospector. My sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here, to this parking lot. So it seems. Like calling an unarmed man to the shootout at high noon. Uh, I don't mean any offense, but... Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective. You calling me out? Shoot you for that in Texas. Sir, you're from West LA. <laughs> huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago to tell you the truth. Oh, really? Now he tells me. But you're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's odd, though. Detective Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do. Nothing important, at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, huh? Edgeworth? That cow dog's been kicked out of his kettle. Kettle run. By order of the chief of police. He talks so confusingly. <laughs> Just he don't realize it, realize it yet. Detective Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation. Interesting. Anyways, I'm gonna slide over here. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. <laughs> Crisscross. <laughs> oh, the entire police department hate, hates Edgy now, yeah. They just don't like him, which is rude. No taste. God, I'm trying to... I can't sit. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, that, that probably works for like 10 minutes or so. Hold on. Okay, that doesn't work <laughs> at all. <laughs> I'm stuck. Ah! I just, I can't sit in chairs. I can't sit at all. Sit like a normal being? No, never. <sighs> okay. Let's examine this bullshit now. Let's look at this phone or whatever. This looks like a cell phone. Scientific analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. What's so scientific about that? Should we check it out? Sure. Right, let's check it out. Oh my god. Man, what a boring strap. 
What's wrong with it? Everyone has different tastes, you know. Here, check out mine. It's a pink princess strap. These are hard to come by, you know. I see the series is as popular as ever with the kids. Hmm. This phone's still on the redial screen. Redial? Um, Mr. Wright? Most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. You just press the blue button to display the last number you called. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know about things like redial. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just... You never know with people from your generation. Whatever, let's check this phone out. Now, to see who the owner of this phone called last. Note to self, a defense attorney doesn't think first, he just pushes the button. My jam, same. Hey, that song! I know that! Which is why I recorded it, because I, uh, I bought, like, the version that you can get on iTunes, but, um... Hold on, wait, let me find it and I'm, I'm gonna show you real quick. Alright. Wow, okay. Because it has the, the, the answering thing, it just ruins everything. And I haven't figured out a way to like, loop it in a good way, I guess. So, yeah. Hey, what's going on over there? Ah, oh, sorry. I see you, partner. You press read dial on that there phone, didn't you? Oh, uh, well, yeah. Whose phone is this anyway? What's on the ground over there? Whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prospector Sky. What? It's my sister's? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now I got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those newfangled ringtunes. Oh, that. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, that was my phone. What? Your phone? Yeah, it's kind of strange, but someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. A wrong number. Sorry, my my. The spikes, uh, they make so that there is, like, no connection between my, my brain at all. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, dude. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. Uh-oh, I'm inside of the Wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. Appears to be the car where the body was found. Looks like the lock on the trunk is busted. 
crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. Quite a luxury car. Just screams, I have money to burn. Well, <laughs> yeah, prosecutors get the big bucks. It's Ashworth's car. This rope, is it? Yep. We laid it in the outline of the victim's body. So, wait. The victim must have died when the killer closed the trunk on him. You've got to be the only person I know that would come to that conclusion. I just now realized what kind of, like, parking spot this is. It's... At least I think I do. Do I or do I not? I don't know. I'm not sure. Because it, it kind of looks like, um... It's like, a. Uh, Kind of elevator, I guess. So that you like store the cars, like the ones that go up. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Is there anything else to look at over here, over yonder? I guess not. Nothing that's like related to, to the crime, anyway. But actually, this. A block. This area is reserved for prosecutors. Defense attorneys are relegated to B block. Dream of the day when I will be able to park my car here. I'll go over to B block to buy my hamburgers from you, Mr. Wright. I'm not planning on giving up my job that soon. B block is through there. That's where visitors park. You can see the lunch line car from from over there, far in the distance. Hey, you're right. I like the cute design on the door. You can see a cartoon cow munching down on a juicy looking steak. Something about that doesn't seem right. <laughs> Doesn't that strike you as a little creepy? Just don't think too deeply about it and you'll be fine. Oops, wrong button. All right, let me talk to you about Lana, Lana. That feels wrong, yeah. So there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. And the prospector tomorrow is none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. Many condolences. Officer Marshall! Yeah, Bambina? How can you say that? You and my sister... You are... Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that dry wind that's blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will, something's... Someone's up to something here, but who? Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forged evidence and arranging testimonies, you mean? He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. But rumors are just rumors, aren't they? These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to their source, you found one person. But they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? I hate to say this, but it's your sister, Bambina. Chief Prospector Lana Sky. That woman said cannibalism. But make it cute. That's what she said. What? My sister? Edward couldn't wrestle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets. Some people load them with deals. What? You're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? Where there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taking off, taken off the case? Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? My 
sister's cell phone. The last time it was used was 518, right after Goodman was killed. Maybe she was canceling her date for the for the night. Why did Lana make that call? Oh, I can actually. Oh, nice. Loss of blood from chest wound. Wound was caused by a 4.5 inch knife. A single stem wound was found. So you're gonna get a bad rash with that knife. Shh. It's fine. Okay, nothing here. Nothing here. Nothing here. Okay, cool. Then it has to be something with a, this dude. I guess I can just start showing him things? I don't know. Autopsy report. Alright, compadre. Count to three. Okay, cool. Whatever. Blue badger. Nope. Parking stuff. 5.12 p.m. Prospector's bright red steed came in at a trot. Real slow like. A trot? My Madonna tells me the crime occurred three minutes later. So it seems the chief prospector was lying in wait. Maybe. Waiting for her prince to read in on his bright red horse. So what you mean is the killer intended to use Edgeworth's car all along? Ah, toy shield suits the boy well. What exactly could you shield with that? A toy knight, maybe. Officer Marshall, don't you have anything good to say about Mr. Edgeworth? You don't like him, right? Get the point. Phoenix is like, please don't, don't. <laughs> Edgeworth is Phoenix's prince. <laughs> oh my god. You know, when I was a detective, I got one of these. Hmm, let me guess. Did it have a K for King of Detectives on it? Hey, they could use the same shield over and over. Note to self, the prosecutor's office and criminal affairs are surprisingly cheap. You know it, they've gotten cheaper with every passing year, I tell you. Okay, cool, whatever. Who's that? Some sort of police passport? This is Detective Goodman's ID card, strangely enough. He found it a good distance away from the crime scene. Good distance in this rat hole? If you want distance, get yourself to Texas. Texas? This is a tiny little crime scene in a tiny little town with tiny little evidence. What difference does a few yards make, compadre? Not to self. If you encounter suspicious evidence, think of Texas. There's no better way to study than to hang out with the pros. See your badge. Looks pretty round. Texas, Texas, Texas. Yes. Our badge is a star, a lone star, shining in the nighttime sky. A beam of light, illuminating evildoers who come in the dark of night. Note to self, evildoers are weak against starlight. Okay, that's a sheriff's badge. Okay, I literally showed you everything I have to offer. What am I missing here? Obviously, there must be something, right? I checked. Those I checked. Oh! Oh! The trunk! What's this? It looks like a note of some sort. Look! Something's written on it! Yes, Gumshoe did say he was from West LA, which makes this even funnier. You're right. Let's see. 6 to 7S. Um, the, me trying to think of like American like uh, date system. <laughs> December second. That's it. There's a name printed on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when it was killed. Well, so what does it mean, Miss Wright? How am I supposed to know? 
Just south. For detective re reasoning, go to Edgeworth, not right. Sure, Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? I guess we got some clues. You have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma? Yes? I know that song your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show for kids? The phone that rang earlier wasn't mine. It was yours. At 518, just after the murder took place, your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I... She hung up right away. I see. A detective is murdered, and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know and everything that went on here. I feel like this part went on forever. Like, I've already streamed for almost two hours. The hell? Oh my god, I feel like this is gonna be a long stream. Alright, hold on. Uh, here we can actually see when I started. 117.25? That has to be- is that one day? No, that doesn't- that doesn't add up because I spent like... 16 hours? Playing the game? Something like that? I don't know. Anyway, 01.17.25. And now it goes to- Or is that the clock? Oh, that's a clock. Never mind. Well, then I guess I, I have no- I have no way of knowing. <laughs> Damn it, I was hoping that it counted like the time you spent playing, whatever. It's fine. Hold on, let me just uh... Mm. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. There is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. First trial without a fay helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. I thought she was gonna say time and then I had to like reprogram my brain. Anyways. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since this trial. Too traumatized. It was just such a har harrowing experience. I, I can't do this anymore. 
I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, it's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough-up queen? Huh? Haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh ho! Caviar! I haven't eaten caviar before! The judge is really wolfing it down. And for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? And you, sir? Did you order the fingerprint lunch box? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? This is why everyone reams about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. Okay. <laughs> what the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name, profession, now. <laughs> Edgeworth, I'm eating breakfast and it's 9 p.m. I don't think that's like. I don't think you can even call it a breakfast at that point. <laughs> Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland this day these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. Prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Ah, uh huh. What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. What? Mr. S Miss Starr was a detective? Cough up? Cough up queen, angel star, your honor. Long time no see. Very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Star. Who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was his valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm, it seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? 
If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? Okay. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finally home detective intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a... Garish? Garish? Car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. Hmm. Is he upset that he doesn't get a lunchbox from Phoenix? <laughs> Sorry. It's like, hmm, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> hmm. As you can see, there is no room for doubts. A key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I am still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh wound. <laughs> Mr. Wright? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Alright. No prints. But that's fair in the... In the picture thing, she was wearing gloves, so... How did she, How did um, this dude die again? Chest wound, yeah. What does that look? How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of time. Yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods but always lead to tragedy. Lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an in investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired? To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. Th that boyfriend? You have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The yet another boyfriend up position is still open for applicants. I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Not to self, the judge has had to think before replying. Security guard room is in the plot and is in the lot in A block. <sighs> it's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunch boxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. Do I? Oh, I do have, okay. Floor plans. So the security room is over there. You sensed something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder. Felt like, how would you say, 
Oh yes, it was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin truck full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Speaking of a detective's intuition. Wasn't the victim Mr. Bruce Goodman also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A uh, young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with the experience of the streets. Greenhorn. Hmm. Huh. Then I must be hard yellowed and sharp as a tack. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Hmm. By garish car, you mean? Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with the, which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed it was. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you were sure it was a defendant. I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. She's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more, more than worms. Ergo, you're a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, Rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That... that was inspiring! I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism? Plagiarism? I, I, I know words. <laughs> I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. Uh, a photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap! I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunch boxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the phot photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Uh-oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, <clears throat> yes, that is about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well, well versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my ex egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean a person. Huh? Perhaps a chicken salad set would ha have been a better metaphor? So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? She pressed it into him. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes, the next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. I said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that. Yeah, you're right, the coat is bloody, but to be fair, it would be bloody if she killed the guy. 
Would it not? Whose code is it anyways? <laughs> see a knife in this picture. You can't even see the victim. Like, surely you would be able to, like, see, like, a tiny sliver, like, down by the... By the wheel, right? Deliver a lunchbox and my boyfriend, okay? When I send something, perhaps with my finally home detective intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I the pretty first way to send her some flash cards. She can hold a knife in her hand. Uh, should I try with the picture? Objection! I should try with the picture. And you witnessed this. You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with a knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm. I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. <laughs> this is the photograph you took at the, took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? And why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Ahem. Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Objection. It had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. Please, can we not? <laughs> can we not do this in court? <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the, before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. And how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph! <laughs> Don't fight in the court, Edgeworth. Save that for the dinner table, sweetie! <laughs> also, the time of the crime was 5.15, I'm pretty sure. Ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ah, uh, You got a better idea? Objection. Wait. That contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems that was slightly unclear. My apologies. That's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo sites lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. Unless someone killed the guy, then made the chief wear that bloody coat. Perhaps. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculate, calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Objection. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hand in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh, if it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing these clothes. Those gloves. Ah! <laughs> the coat doesn't seem to suit her. <laughs> I like how they're just like, 
Can't, can't you tell from the woman's aesthetics that that coat just doesn't fit? <laughs> like, are you blind? <laughs> These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. Murder was planned. Rubber gloves prove it. But... The knife. <laughs> Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunch box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? A bloody murder weapon, a red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there? The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, are prosecutors bad people? <laughs> the defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. I don't know whether to call her Lana or Lana. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Order! 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 Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Huh. The prosecution would care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be under underestimated. The way their faces change when they are accused in the right way is a great thing about this game. Yeah, I know, right? Really now? Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Well, that one's that one's obvious. The victim was summoned from the police department to the pr prosecutor's office. I cannot fucking speak. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I order pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. That one was obvious. Lady. Knife in again and again and again. But it was only one knife wound. One stab. Yes. You say she stabbed him again and again. You couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this. But take a look. 
The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! Uh -huh. You're right! Good show, Miss Redworth. What a hunk! He's my hero, really. What about my objection? No one noticed? <laughs> Maybe she stabbed him in the exact same place. I don't think that's possible. Or if it is, it's like... Really, 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 really slim. Well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood. When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breasts. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. And tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify! Her red muffler looked like blood to me. Her what now? Objection! It's almost as if I remember this case. Miss Starr, I demand an explanation. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler or of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself. This photograph. Huh? Uh, but that... That can't be! Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Hmm. Harsh words. But good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chop liver? <laughs> I hit the springs on my mic stand. But it was there, a scarf. No, not that, but something red, really. Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. Ma'am? Ma'am? <laughs> Ma'am? Ma yes. A cobra is a snake. Ma'am? <laughs> That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. Most people are. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She nodded my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rare. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. Huh, <sighs> okay. You quickly caught her, but like, uh, let me, let me just press this. <laughs> the nail lady. 
You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details. Press. I'd like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. The Lanishland car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That will make it about 30 feet from the car, yes! Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The cough of queen, lunch lady, athlete, indeed! It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? You say that as if I'm supposed to know how far 30 feet is. <laughs> 30 feet and we're just like... Yes, exactly. Um, so I believe like... 2 meters is 6 feet, right? So... 12 feet... Or 4 meters. I'm really struggling to brain right now. <laughs> and 8 meters is 24 feet. So like... 9? <laughs> 24. Four plus how many six feet plus two meters then where was I? <laughs> ten meters ten meters right? <laughs> Thirty feet two meters. Nine point one four four actually. Yeah, nine point one. So I was actually pretty on point when I said nine first. I was like so, so nine? See, I know math. <laughs> I just don't know how to brain. Anyways, back to the case at hand, literally. The case. Huh, okay. Let's see. I rested her on the spot. Wait, um. Oh, yeah. The phone. So, where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. So, two meters? She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? Yes, Lana called her sister right after the incident. That is correct. Morning. 
She made to escape? Can you be more specific? She pushed aside my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see, like a dollop of lard on a pate of foie, foie gras. Catched her, but yeah. Huh? She even kicked over an oil drum at me. An oil drum? There was an oil drum lying on its side of the scene of the crime. But it's strange. Huh? What's that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other? Huh? The parking lot entrance! That's right! It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the oil drums. Excellent! More mysteries! I wish we could solve a few before finding more, though. So Miss Sky tried to run. Sorry my sister is so suspicious, Miss Ra Mr. Wright. I'm not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it. You have to believe me. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? Oh yeah. 30 feet away. Okay, cool. What if I press her again? Over there, yeah. Nine feet high too. So that's like over... Three meters then. Americans just like to like make things difficult for them for like no reason. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna rant a little bit. <laughs> they like making it hard for themselves because like using like the imperial system. I don't get it. It's like when you have the metric system, uh you have like tens, you know? Everything is like in tens. So you have like there's a hundred centimeters in a meter, right? I'm not mistaken this one. <laughs> and and so on and so forth. But yeah, it's more even and it's easier to like calculate in your head, like but with the imperial system. There are 12 inches in a foot. Huh? Why? Who made it so? Like, why? Why can't they, like, find something that makes it have 10? <laughs> I've seen people use anything else to avoid using Imperial. They compare the size of a pothole to six washing machines. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. That's true, I've seen that too. And it's like when people tell, uh, say their heights to, like, I'm five foot six, and I'm like, I still don't know what that means. I just, I just know that I am that, but I don't know, like, in terms of what. But like, if I say I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm one six nine meters, and it's like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Uh. Whenever I need to tell someone my height online, I just want to Google. Yeah, but that's it too. Like if you if you Google it, you just get like some confusing thing. Like if I um, if I take like uh, one six nine centimeter in feet. Well, okay, it says like five feet, six point five, three, five inches. But it's still confusing. Metric is so much better. It is! And also something I realized like uh, earlier, like last year, so like late last year sometimes, uh, at some point, uh, I realized that um, 
I'm not sure if it's like just Norway or if it's like the entirety of Scandinavia, but like uh, here, like 10,000 kilometers is a mile, but also like not a mile because a mile is something else, but like the yes. <laughs> Oh my god, that can't be right. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, it's just so confusing, I don't understand how they deal with it. But yeah, here a uh, 10,000 kilometers is like what we call a mile. Which is like so much easier, but apparently it's not like that all over the world. Huh? I thought it was just like common knowledge, but apparently not. Uh, don't get me started on Fahrenheit. Like fucking use Kelvin. I don't care. Convert into Fahrenheit in ninth grade. Oh my god, no, that sounds awful. Oh my god, um. I read about it some at some point. Wait, metric system. Uh, common metric systems. Meters and millimeter. Damn, I don't remember exactly where I found it, but I was like. the same thing but apparently not anyways whatever i'm fucking i'm derailing <laughs> i'm derailing so hard and i've already spent almost three hours god this is gonna be a long case you know but i might just fucking up it to fucking 10 hours because wanna die it's fine i'll get through it somehow Sky not get away. Okay, let me just ask about the muffler, I guess. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was a murdered muffler. Just that one word. So what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... My phone? Do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. 
Huh. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You can't spell. I can't speak. Billy, we're like, kind of like... Yes. See, I can't speak. <laughs> I believe we're kind of on the same page, I guess. You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Alright. Here we go. Now I can go and... Yes! Today is weird, I'll tell you that. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Huh, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem. Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that is true... You couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. Ah! Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. <laughs> it's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness is holding in the court. This is where the counterattack begins. Can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about where she saw it. The sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing, therefore it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. But say the witness did actual did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I've ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed the crime was here. Just like anywhere in the A block or... Security room? Yeah, but that didn't work. If she was here, she could see the emergency phone. That's true. That solves the mystery. That would allow her to see the emergency phone, yes. But if she was there, she would have been able to arrest her well before she dialed her cell phone. Oh. You doubt my speed? I could run 100 feet in t 9 seconds, you know. 100, 150 feet. Security room. Oh yeah, of course, of course, of course. Is that really that fast? Not as fast as your witty rejoinders. Okay, whatever. Ah, uh, yes, your honor. Okay, cool. Take that! This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security guard is the underground in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But right there, there are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. I don't know why you're bringing that up, considering you just penalized me for saying exactly that. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. 
I remember in your testimony, you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, right? Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men? Do you think that the tables could be turned? Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order! Order! Witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty. Is she talking about Miss Sky? Wait, but like... How did she get this photo then? Right? Doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Rigged camera? Perhaps. She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was a defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. Okay. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Uh, me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. The star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B block. It must make a vital difference. But what? What would change? Distance to the crime? It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright. But one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness. Ew. Yes. You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. Okay, I got I got I got to take a little break with the with the voices. <laughs> I witnessed the crime from the glass wall station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running toward the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B block. Quite a detour. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. F five minutes? Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic, plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. But you said it was quick. Yeah, this 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 lady making no sense. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do you have any any evidence to stop this? Objection! Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make a pasta in that amount of time. If you like it al dente. I've got lunch boxes that type pasta into knots, rookie. A 
five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer, you would run. But this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Fortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. I did it! I screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. That was too close. I am afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, the court is adjourned. Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. <sighs> Is this your jumbo lunchbox? A triple decker. Oh god. Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? Lunchbox? Lunchbox. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now... To the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was of course the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Objection! Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. This is unrelated, but I was looking at the guide and apparently Angel's necklace looks like a sausage octopus. Didn't you realize that until now? Why are you looking at the guide? Get out of the guide! Spoilers! <laughs> In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Oh, no, 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 it is a, it is a, it is a sausage octopus, yeah. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You could at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding. It appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against your witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Okay, but before that, I want to look at the shoe.
It's blood. It's my sister's, right? It appears so. Lana's right hand was bandaged when I saw her in jail. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. blood here too. And the sole of the shoe? It's gotta be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood. It's horrible. Hmm. This blood might be an important clue. Interesting. Wait, wait. Hmm. I'm thinking how she'd cut her hand while stabbing someone. <laughs> so, you brought it to the forensics department. If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. She got away with her little coup because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have blood stains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. Said, there were two types of blood found at the shoe. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to def the defendant with the blood tests. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Huh. Well, speak up. Uh, well, blood comes in four time types A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. Wow. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. That's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten a DNA test result. Okay, so she didn't get that. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone's but Miss Lana's guys. So the suspect's blood was found in the victim's shoe. It ties her directly to the death of the detective Goodman. I can't even speak! <sighs> like, did you not hold a knife properly? Probably not. I was afraid he was going to say that. Let this evidence go through without a, without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Oh my god. Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some, like your client, she's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? There's a problem. I'm not imagining things. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. A gleam in your eyes. You're still a young rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? This shoe is so clutches with the coat! <laughs> Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem, okay. Oh, okay, I just have to show this, I guess. Take that! I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, Rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Oh, indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense, the victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? Uh... No blood! The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the, cr at the scene of the crime. 
That contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor. So there could have been bloody footprints. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness. What? Huh? I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright. But... It's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. It's true, there has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright. Think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. Chief Prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside and kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator of this one. A leopard woman. I thought that was strange. That was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that. Hmm, I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. So apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox fa factory. Wit witness! Well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. How the hell do you just kick over a whole oil drum? I don't think you can do that by accident. I mean, maybe if like run into it, but again, if it's like filled with water, I would assume that would be kind of Hard still. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright. Do you want to know the reason she kicked it over? The real reason. Aha! You don't mean. Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the blood stains that would become evidence against her. That ties things up quite nicely. I'm trying to decide if it's worth going out to get some ice cream. Do it. The blood stains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. And after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale, telltale signs. And that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Sky's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she'd cut herself when she stabbed him. So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe. Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, your honor. Very well. The angel star is on the prosecution's side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Thank God. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? M me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution's side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well... I thought you had your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. Time for deliberations is past. Any further comments, and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough-up queen. Look at this. Photograph? 
I had it just in case anyone had the gall to su suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm, I see no room for error in this evidence. M Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! It's clearly wet! Oh no. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Guess I, I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. Sorry, Mia. Right. Wet or not, don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the uh, up, up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. <laughs> this woman has more evidence than the lunchbox kind she owns. <laughs> this is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time, I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Your Honor, wait! What is it with you people? Can I hand down my verdict in peace anymore? Wherever, whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph! The last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. Think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I got to go ahead with this. When you're a judge, shut the fuck up and listen. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give her, her give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Mm. Alright, well, we, what do we got? The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor? You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part on a car or a motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see, and I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm. Huh. So what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Objection! Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you have already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth and the muffler is related to this case. Oh, wait, it's over here. Take that! Miss Starr, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, oh, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. This man doesn't own a driver's license. Yeah, neither does Phoenix, though, so... Muffler! Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned... ...was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do have a disservice to the we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Huh, <sighs> that was close. But 
We made it. Or at least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? All right. I don't know about you guys, but I am hungry too. <laughs> so I'm just gonna like take a short break, get something to eat, and then I can uh, continue. Hold on. Only one part. Yeah, it's one part of the trial. It's trial ladder. That's the one that's coming up here. Yeah, you go get that ice cream. Sounds like a good idea. I'm gonna go and uh, get some ramen. No, actually, I'm gonna go get burgers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hold on, before I go though. Sorry, dropped a few frames there. Um, oh god, there we go. Three minute burgers, yes. <laughs> um, it's that one I need, and uh, nope, not that, not that, and uh. This. Pfft. Almost. There we go. <laughs> okay, I will I will be I will be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Uh, let me see. Is that something I can do? Hold on. I need to put on the timer. For my three minute burgers. <laughs> So, yeah. Ugh. Let me go here and see what we got here. I do have that. Okay. So I do. Dumbest fucking shit. All right. God, there's so much stuff on my desk. Can I even fucking pour? Ah, yes, soda. That's exactly what I need now when my throat is like. Not the best, you know. Might as well. I won't take a lot. So, anyways, how are you guys doing today? Thirty seconds left. Well, technically, it's practically good to go, but. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> yes, this is now a mukbang stream, I guess. Bengi, you're still there? <laughs> oh, 
more eating tiramisu. That sounds nice. Oh, by the way, last time I like mentioned that uh, they certain aspects of uh, with a teaspoon, teaspoon of coffee, <laughs> of course, because I'm a man of culture. I think I've only eaten tiramisu with the fork, like a dessert fork. But yeah, last time uh, I mentioned that parts of Ace Attorney is like based on um, BL manga or BL in general. So basically what happened was at, I had to rewatch that video because it, it's so funny. So basically what happened uh, was that uh, when when the game came out in 2001, uh, you couldn't just like search up things the same way you can nowadays, right? So like they had to, they had to go to like uh, forums and there they found like a lot of people just shipping their characters for some reason. They, they were like, how can we capitalize on this? Uh, so like just keep in like keep in your mind that like the BL aspects weren't brought onto the game until the second game. But they're like still so visibly there in the first game, despite it like not being their intention. But like for the other games, there were basically like people who were fucking just researching like BL and what people would like would like. So in the second game, there is this like uh, flamboyant character uh, who like has his like jacket open and has in like uh, exposed abs and stuff. And in the third game, there is this like little meek shy guy. <laughs> so. And the chess pieces. It's so funny. Ah. We're so close to making a dirty joke about pawns and horses. No! Well, now it's there. And this is going on my YouTube, so... You know. Yeah. Also, another thing that I find like really, really hilarious was that uh, in 2018, I believe, no, 2017, 17, sorry, uh, they like collabed with like some kind of like jewelry, jewelry maker and they had like certain jewelry made for their characters. So also from like the latter games and also from Daikyakuten Saibam, which is like set in the past. And when I say that Narumitsu are the only ones who has rings <laughs> and also they match. I am just um Not your most shameful event? Oh boy, I don't want I, I don't want to see you when you're on your most shameful. Hold on, wait. I can save the photo because I, I sent it to Fleur earlier.
Okay. So. These are, these are the rings. No, the Wi-Fi, no. These are the rings. No, you can't see it. I'm trying to... Ah. Oh my god, your Wi-Fi is like... Being really homophobic right now. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave them on for a little while longer then, so you can see. There also are, uh, I also have a picture of some of the other uh, jewelry. You can't really see them that well because it's like a screenshot from like a Twitter account. But yeah, we have necklaces and a pair of rings. <laughs> hmm, interesting. I don't know, I just, I just find that Kind of funny, I guess. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Put them <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> so typical of your Wi Fi to cut out just as I'm about to show something. <laughs> I find that really funny. Also, speaking of, like, Capcom, like, game goods, I, it just, like, at least, like, Japanese ones, I can't really speak about the Western ones. But, like, they just, like, seem to be, like, way too much, you know? Like, there have been, like, teacups you could get, like, some, uh, what do you call it? Like, some, not coasters, but, like smaller plates and stuff. It's just insane. <laughs> like Okami um, has this plate that they're gonna like sell later this year, I believe in March, is when the collection actually gets released. And uh, it's a plate for 10,000 yen, which is like a hundred dollars, pretty much. Which is insane. It's for a plate. <laughs> Yes, it's for a plate. Hold on. I can send you a picture of... Or I can show a picture of said plate. Mm my eyes on a single person teacup what's that mean well actually speaking of I want to show you uh, the Edgeworth teacups <laughs> I need to save this I'm gonna go here here Oops, nope, that's the that's the wrong one. This one. Mm. 
If I was smart, I could probably just like stream like the actual browser, but pff. no, I like making things hard for myself. Where the hell is the fucking plate? There we go. Ah, it's from Roald Dahl's museum. <laughs> well, it won't bite you. Well, maybe, actually, maybe. I wouldn't send the link <laughs> just in case. <gasps> but yeah. Uh, here is the Edgeworth teacups. really cute um and then we have the okami plates i want those cups i get it here we have the okami plates to a hundred bucks i'm sorry <laughs> what kind of fucking insanity well wait let me zoom in on it so you can see it a bit better I mean, it's it's pretty for sure, but like, huh? <laughs> so yeah, uh, Capcom goods, insane for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Flora, you're back. I didn't even realize. Because on my screen, you have, like, the same color uh, on your names. And it's really, really confusing. I mean, I'm sure you could probably use it if you wanted to. Um, from like two years ago, so on the, oops, wrong button, sorry about that. <laughs> Okami also had, uh, like a bunch of stuff. You know what, actually for this, I am gonna show it with this, cause why not? It's just easier. Like, this is for like two years ago. Like, there are these mugs. We can, we can actually scroll down to see. We have 18,000 yen. Just like, uh, remove like the last zeros and you pretty much have the, the price in, in dollars. Like, there are these like cute mugs. And like, these cute like, uh, saucers. Like, um, I guess like for teacups or something. And there are these, which I believe are for, uh, well, this one's that were for, uh, what's it called? God damn it. I know what they're called, but for chopsticks to rest on like chopstick rests. And there's this comb and a fan. And this phone case, which like, that's more like what I would expect, but like everything else. Oh my God, this is kind of funny. <laughs> it's like a tissue box, uh, like wrapping, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then a mirror. And if we go back to the one here is like the things that are coming up this year. I wanted to get this one. Look, it's so cute. 
but you can't get it like well you, you can't get it if you have a Japanese card Japanese card really you can't get it like they don't they don't offer anything it's so mm, it's so annoying it's so frustrating like Japan why you gotta be so difficult It is adorable. Um, also if we have them. Um, I wonder, is it closed yet? No, oh yeah. So here we have um, a web page. It closes. There are closing times. For a web page. Huh? <laughs> what the hell? Um, what time is it right now, actually? In Japan, I'm just checking. Ah, uh, it just opened. It literally just opened like five minutes ago. <laughs> I don't know. They just. Like being difficult, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Japan are strange. Hold on, wait. Let me go grab my uh, phone charger because my phone is like kind of dying right now. <laughs> Just enjoy this one <laughs> while I'm gone. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Though, like, to be fair, um, Japan has, like, really, like, Weird stuff. I like to say, I've probably said it like on stream already, but I like to say that they live in the future as well as in the past, like simultaneously. Because like, uh, I went to Japan back in 2019 because I, I, I saw Janice West live, first of all. And uh, I also were there to meet some friends. God, I should have gotten some pictures of them, whatever. They're... <laughs> They're on the wall over there. I'm not actually no, they're not. I forgot to put them up again. Oops. Oh, they're over there anyways. <laughs> so, went to Japan, and uh, you're like, oh okay, you know, like big like cultural differences. It's fine. It's just something to get used to. But then we have the houses with no insulation. And me, living in Norway, which generally gets cold in the winter, I'm like, huh? What is happening? <laughs> like, I am so confused because like, how do you not have this? So we went to, uh, actually no, we had this like little stove. I'm not quite sure what it ran on. Uh, she probably told me at the time, but I forgot. Um, but like there was this like stove uh, we had on while we were in the living room. And the warmest we could get it, just around the place where we sat, was 17 degrees Celsius. And we woke up in the morning to like 3 degrees. And I came home after having been in Japan to my apartment where I had turned off my uh, heating it was 19 degrees <laughs> and I'm like how? 
how? <laughs> how has the Japanese survived? Also, they still rely on fax machines. Who the hell uses fax machines? Except for Japan, I guess. Never even seen a fax machine before. Oh, <laughs> I guess Japan and and Turkey then. <laughs> what kind of mystical creature are you, a Turk? <laughs> sorry, sorry, that may have been a bit mean. I'm sorry. Um. So yeah, they have no insulation, but thank God, thank God, thank Kamisama that you have heating in your toilet seat. <laughs> Just like... Well, yeah, sure, but like I feel I, I feel like the priorities are a bit skewed. <laughs> like, I just find it really strange. Kotatsu, um, yeah, they do have kotatsu too, but not everyone has a kotatsu. Though those who have usually bring them forward when it's cooled out. Which I now get because it gets so fucking ridiculously cold. They do seem cozy, but you shouldn't fall asleep under them or something. I don't know, I've, I've heard something about that. Japan is weird, man. I absolutely recommend going there. It's 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 a great time. I was like, as someone who has also been to Turkey, where I just felt like overwhelmed by all the people and how they were just like, they didn't know what personal space was. It was so much better going to Japan, despite there being like a lot more people in general. Um, but like you know. The Japanese people, they usually just like stick to themselves. There are lots of Japanese tourists in Turkey. Maybe because it's cheap, I don't know. I know my mom goes to Turkey because it's cheap. <laughs> so. Cultural areas, that's interesting. Speaking about my friend who lives in Japan, by the way, like, she has met people. Granted, like, she lives, like, kind of out in the Goonies, like, literally out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> also further north in Japan. And, like, 
she has met people who didn't know that people outside of Japan had rice. They thought rice was only in Japan for some fucking reason. I don't know. Maybe they meant like specifically Japanese rice, but even that's not true. <laughs> Someone's like, hello? <laughs> How out of touch are you? And there are certain things that uh, Japanese think people think they're like so special for, but it's just like, no. <laughs> They not heard about exporting which is kind of funny because like isn't japan like the biggest importer of like norwegian salmon or something which speaking about by the way um using salmon for sushi sushi was not normal at first but now you like you can't even look at sushi without there being a fucking salmon somewhere But there was basically like this Norwegian guy who went over there and just like, hey, try this. <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 we don't, we don't do salmon. We don't put salmon on sushi. We don't, no. But then they did. And that was just like this huge thing. <laughs> and I find it so funny. So technically, uh, salmon sushi is a Norwegian invention. Kampai. <laughs> you know what, since it's a like kampai, I might as well. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know, like, what, what the context was even. But, like, I just suddenly, like, wanted to, like, Google Norwegian uh, inventions. And salmon sushi was one of them. And I was like, huh? <laughs> that was the strangest thing. Yeah, and now you can find Norwegian salmon, like, everywhere. I mean, yeah, I, I think actually there was, like, they needed, like, some people to export the salmon, too. Something like that. So they were like, hey, try this. <laughs> so we could sell you our salmon, please. <laughs> I'm almost done now, I swear. <laughs> The Dutch invented the Indonesian rice table. What the hell is a rice table? Dutch following the young presentation of Nasi Padang from the Padang region of West Sumatra. Huh. Eh. 
Interesting. Indonesia people were curious about the cuisine and the spices. Mm. We'll probably go to Indonesia for food, so I asked to let them taste everything. They made many small Indonesian dishes and call it rice table. 100% authentic, definitely just invented. <laughs> Interesting. By the way, uh, Fleur, what kind of ice did you get? Ice cream. More flavor. What the hell is that? <laughs> Stracciatella. Variety of gelato consisting of milk based ice cream filled with fine irregular shavings of chocolate. Yeah, it sounded like chocolate chunk or whatever. Okay, I'm ready to get back to gaming now. I spent more, way longer than I probably needed, but you know what? It'd be like that. All right. I already saved, probably, don't care. No, I didn't actually, it's a trial former. All right. Um, Mr. Wright? Huh, what? Are trials always like this with you? Like you're swimming up the bottom of the, of the lake, about to reach the surface, but no matter how hard you paddle, you never seem to get there. Pretty much. Except today we're swimming in quicksand. So what happened to your sister anyway? Trial part two. Finally. The, the, wait, was that? Was this actually like a thirty-minute break? <laughs> Apparently she got she got called off to the judge's chambers. Hmm, probably something to do with that piece of cloth. So this is where we turn this trial around, right? Our only weapon. A tiny insignificant piece of cloth. I'm the one who's starting to feel tiny and ins insignificant to tell the truth. Hold out, partner. You say you show a red cloth to a bull, it'll fire up its tail. That's what they told me when I was a young one, at least. Officer Marshall! Thought I'd come to take a look. Look, see at how the trial's going. Looks like I'm late. Looks like I'm late. You know it starts at 10 a.m. It always starts at 10 a.m. <laughs> I got the home range locked down tattered and a fort in, 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 in enemy territory. Bulls are colorblind. Yeah, that's true. It's the action. Yep, 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 yep. That's true. 
That hard to slip out, huh? What's going on over there anyway? All the police I've seen there last two days have been really on edge. Don't you got enough on your plate without worrying about other people, compadre? You could be worrying about the chief prosecutor's taste in mufflers, for example. Um, Officer Marshall? The whole muffler thing didn't have anything to do with scarves. She wasn't even wearing a scarf. You don't say. And don't that just beat all. I've seen the red breeze blow at her slender neck many a time. I saw it that day too. She was wearing a red muffler. What? At the awards ceremony that afternoon, Edgeworth's seen it too, I reckon. What does that mean? In the photograph taken at the crime scene, she wasn't wearing a scarf. So, Miss Starr wasn't mistaken. Well, it's about time. Remember, partner, sometimes you gotta grab the bull by the horns, and sometimes you just gotta let that bull go where it will. Time will tell. Ugh, I have a bad feeling about this. So, what are we swimming in now, Mr. Wright? If it's stick sauce, I can hook you up with some fine ribs. Ooh wee. Um, I was gonna look at that. Well, I know exactly how many bars there are to this fucking case. <sighs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Is he drinking? I want to like speak about like a trial in uh, the fifth game? No, it's in the sixth game, I'm pretty sure. Because that was something. Uh, not to spoil anything. I don't know if I want to because I just, I want to like, make you all aware of this. But like, you don't know the context. Eh. I'd like to resume. What's up? The judge keeps looking over at the persecution. Is something wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? Your face is blue, your lips are purple, you're sweating bullets. Furrowed brow, those grinding teeth, those watery eyes. What's, mo what's more, your eyes are unfocused. You're doubled over, your back is bent. It can't be. This can't happen. I wonder what happened, Mr. Edgeworth. Well then, I believe it is time we continued on with this trial. During our recess, I had requested that the prosecution conduct an investigation. This is unacceptable! <laughs> she needs a hot bath and some quality time with Phoenix. It will come in due time. Oops. <laughs> oh, it seems our prosecutor is quite beside himself. Excuse me, knock knock, who's this? Who's there? What's with this guy? A strange stuffy aura seems to be filling the courtroom. Hey, the temperature rose 5.7 degrees when that man came in. His eyes. Earth is he? Ah, it's you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm late, Aji. The roads were packed. It's just me. I don't know how to do this guy's voice. Long time no see ya, Jean. How you been? Swim much these days? 
Ah, hello, hello. No, I've been so busy. Busy, 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 Edgy, my boy. Edgy, my boy. You have to make time to relax. Yes, indeed. I have to fix the chirp, 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 chirp. Yes, indeed. Achi seems to be his nickname for the judge. I'm afraid you're right. Very afraid. Um, sorry, but who are you? So you're right, O the attorney. I've heard good things about you, son. Uh, thanks. So sorry about our little worthy giving you all that trouble, huh? You know, we should all go swimming together sometime. Jolly! Little worthy? Mr. Wright! You don't know the district chief of police? Ch chief of police? This man. He is the top ranking police officer in the entire district. Name's Gant. Damon Gant. Pleased to meet you, everyone. So, uh, to what do we owe this honor today? It's been over two years since you last came to this courtroom, hasn't it? Oh, it's worthy here. Look at that poor fellow. I just thought I'd help out by bringing this. Hey, that's... My sister's muffler. So Miss Star wasn't just seeing things. When the crime occurred, Miss Sky really was wearing that muffler. But to think that it was stuffed into that exhaust pipe. A little worth this car, no less. It's really quite embarrassing, even for us. What's this? It's what you'd call a switchblade knife. Quite perplexing, this. <laughs> Plot twist, this man is one of the boyfriends. <laughs> Chief, what kind of outfit are you running? Mr. Edgeworth. How could they miss such a vital piece of, piece of evidence? If your investiga investigators are this lax, how do you expect us to do our job? No, wait a minute, Worthy. I have no desire to hear your excuses. I'm telling you to wait. Or didn't you hear me? Have a look at this document, where it says person in charge of investigation. There is no mistake in that s signature is there. Miles Edgeworth? That's not fair. On the day of the crime, I, I had... Your head in the clouds because you got that award. I know how you feel. But you're the person in charge. I'll expect a written apology. What? Are you serious? Don't be too upset. We'll find a way to clean up this mess that you made. This is the first time I've seen Miss Redgeworth at a loss for words. This kind of major blunder is unlike you, Mr. Redgeworth. <laughs> the court accepts this new evidence. But I'd like to ask the defense a favor first. Y yes? Just to be sure. I'd like to take a look at the blade of this knife. The b blade, Your Honor? Well, I don't see why not. Could you open it for me, I wonder? Yes, well, I think all you have to do is push that switch and... If I cut my finger, Mr. Wright, I wouldn't be able to pound my gavel anymore. Yeah, but if I cut my finger, I wouldn't be able to point it at people anymore. Come on, just hurry up and open it! Go the other way! I can't... I'm not in control. Uh, 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 don't scare me like that. I'm the one who's scared. Look at 
like this knife blade. The tip's broken off. And this dark red stain. Blood? This is not excuse the actions of the police department. I would like to hear an explanation from the chief of police himself. I'm terribly sorry, but could I ask you to testify for us? Half the split between the prosecutors and the police and this knife. Sure, sure thing. Not a problem. Not even a little one, really. This knife is special, but I can't say how here. Unless there is evidence to prove a connection between this knife and Goodman. That was a bad day for the department. We weren't in any shape to do an investigation. The detective was killed at the police department, see? What a mess. The time of the crime? 5.15. Scary coincidence, huh? It's not officially linked to this here case, so I can't talk much about it. There. There was a murder at the police department? A detective? That's hush-hush information, Naji. We haven't exactly announced it yet. Objection! Wait a second. You said 5.15. That's the exact time that Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Not sure if I should like this man, but why would they give him ice like that? Anyway, we at the department were all of flustered, as you might well assume. We're in the middle of a top secret investigation. Don't tell anyone, okay? I think we understand the police department situation. Well, Mr. Wright? Two detectives killed at the same time in two different places. The chances of that are really slim. Scientifically speaking, of course. I'd like to exercise my right to cross-examine the witness. They stare into your soul. Mm. Yeah. Very well. However, keep your questions focused on the case at hand. This knife was found on the scene of our crime. I think that makes it connected to the case, don't you? See, there's a lot of things that go on at the department I can't explain. It's delicate, okay? I mean, sure. Stop playing Fortnite, little Luke! That good. <laughs> what the hell is that? That was the strangest thing. <laughs> I hope. I hope he scared your friends. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Rido. Maybe there's something about the knife that will give us a clue. Thank you so much. You're welcome, my dude. <laughs> Let's examine that knife while we can, Rido. What? Oh, thank you, It Smash, for, for, for the follow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I got so confused because I just heard an objection and I'm like, wait, there was nothing on the screen. <laughs> thank you so much. Hmm, evidence that links this knife to Detective Goodman. I think perhaps the pieces are falling into place. I should try presenting the piece of evidence that's had me stumped all this time. So how were things done at the department? Wait, let me, uh, look further at this, maybe? There's a small tag on the knife. It says SL92. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not sure, but it reminds me of a similar code. DL6? Maybe it's a case number. That's weird. What? I don't remember where... I think I've seen something like this before. Something similar to what's written on this tag. It wasn't that long ago either. Maybe I should check the court record again. The paper. The paper indeed. Objection! The note. Wait a second! Ah, at last! An honest-to-goodness objection! This knife. 
This has to have something to do with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? Ah, an honest to goodness, what do you mean from Uji? This is great! Look at the tag on this knife. It reads SL92. And this is important, why? Over here we also have a memo that was on the body of the victim. Hmm, what's this? 6 minus 7 S. 12 divided by 2? <laughs> Your Honor, it's upside down. Upside? The printed name on the memo makes it look like it's right side up. But turn it around and what do you get? Aha! Whoever wrote this note was holding the paper upside down. Cell 9. That's the same thing that is written on that knife's tag. <laughs> this judge, oh god, I'd be a better judge. Order, order. Well, chief. I wonder how hard it is to become a judge. I mean, all you have to do is just like hit a hammer. So I can't imagine it would be that hard. Especially considering a G over here. Oh well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. You win, Rido. I win? Uh, what game is this guy playing? I don't know about him, but I'm playing Ace Attorney right now. <laughs> this knife was evidence in a case. It was stolen from the department's evidence room. So this knife was stolen? Yes, but on the day of the murder. It was evidence, you say? Was it in fact a murder weapon? Nice, nice, nice! Good show, little worthy. It was a murder weapon, as it happens. It was evidence from a case long since solved. So this knife was stolen on the day of the murder. And it was found in the exhaust pipe of Edgeworth's car. Hard to think there isn't a connection there. It was a bad day for the other apartment who weren't in shape. I'm just gonna press everything. <laughs> Something happened at the police department too, huh? You got a good look in your eyes there, Rido, my boy. Sharp. Hungry. Please tell me I'm not the only one who gets the chills when he laughs with his mouth open like that. I don't think you're the only one. <laughs> so, something did happen, and why wasn't I informed? Why weren't you informed? Well, why didn't you ask? No matter, I understand. You were busy. What with Lana's case and all. Well, what happened? What happened at the police department that day? Hold it. On the same day that a detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department? That's a fact! Surprising, isn't it, Aji? I'm at a loss for words. And the perpetrator? Do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. Just arrested? That was quick. But there's still a lot of unanswered questions. Maybe you could help, Rido. I suppose I could help. If you could if you help me by giving me data on your case. Oh, good one. This kid's sharp. Okay, here's the deal. I'll tell you one thing, and one thing only. Well, we know... That one. So I guess how it was killed. Well, how was the detective killed? How was he killed? Now that's the interesting part. It was what we in the force call a stabbing. With a knife. A knife? That's exactly the same as Detective Goodman! That's the spirit we're cooking now! But you know, that's not the only thing that was exactly the same. What do you mean? There were more similarities between the two cases than the cause of death. 
Seems like I'm going to have to press this a bit harder. He's like an owl. Yeah, he looks like an owl. Five, 15? But that's... That's when Detective Goodman was killed in the prosecutor's office. What? Funny, isn't it? A murder at the prosecutor's office and a murder at our place at the very same time. What are the chances? Coincidence? We're in the police department, though. This is my gut feeling, but I'd say there is a 0.001% chance of that happening. Chief Gant, please tell us more about the incident. It's not officially linked to this here case, so I can't talk much about it. Oh, that's it. Okay, cool. What knife? What is it doing there? I better check this knife out. More about the knife? How can you say there's no connection? How? Because I'm the chief of police. I can't just say anything I please, Raito. You understand. Try to understand, Raito. Well, if you can prove there is a connection, more power to you. Perhaps there is something that ties the two murders together. Whatever it is, I better find it and get to the bottom of this. Two detectives were killed at 515, one at the prosecutor's office and one at the police department. It can't be a coincidence. And that knife. What was it doing there? Better check this knife out. There is nothing more to check out about the knife. Wait. No, that's just uh, that's just that one again. Oh well. Hmm. This is where I got like a lot of... Where the victim was found then. So tell me, where was the victim found? Well, I can't speak on where the corpse was found, but I can say the crime took place in the evidence room at the police department. The evidence room? Wait a second. I've heard of that. The evidence room. Didn't he mention that in his testimony just now? This knife was evidence in a case. It was stolen from the department's evidence room. There's the connection between the two cases. You seem happy, Mr. Wright. Happy? We just got handed our ticket to go to town on this case. With a link between the two cases established. We finally have some leverage. Now we can get Gan to just testify about the details. What is it, this? Objection! Nope. That's not it. Chief, the defense's position is simply this. The connection between these two cases has already been proven. Huh, you don't say. Well, out with it, Righto. What's your connection? Yes, out with it, Mr. Wright. The connection is a place mentioned in the testimony we just heard. The knife found in the lot was stolen from the police department's evidence room. Not to mention the victim had on him the case number on the knife's evidence tag. We also know that the, <laughs> that the detective murdered at the police department was killed in that very same evidence room. Indeed. There do seem to be too many connections for it to be a coincidence. You two make a good pair. It took my men two days to find out what you would do right there. <laughs> he 
You two make a good pair. Chief. <laughs> I request that you release your information, even the chief ships it. I request that you release your information on the victim at your pol at the police department. See, that's the tricky part. It hasn't been announced yet and all. Can we get the information? Unofficially. Hmm. Sure, why not? It's unofficial after all. <laughs> chief, don't help me and my boyfriend. <laughs> what? Really? Who would have guessed? I cooperate, but I can't reveal the name of the victim at the department, okay? If you're going to tell us a little, why not tell us everything? Ah, well, case information is sticky stuff. You have to do everything properly. Well, I guess I might as well try to get what I can out of him. The ID number! Okay, how about you tell me the victim's ID number? Sure, why not? It's not like you'd be able to tell who it is from that. Of course not! You won't tell me their name after all. I keep a tight lid on ID numbers, so don't go getting your hopes up. The number is... 58421189. Well, that's quite long. We have to remember these. It drives me nuts. H2. I can't do it! We didn't even get the first number right. Chief, I swear to God, we had a whole surprise party ready and everything. Well, Mr. Wright, does this tell you anything? Isn't that Goodman's number? It sure is. This tells me something. Actually, it does, Your Honor. It does. I think. Meaning? It has to be what I think it is. But what does this mean? Well, let's hear what the defense has to say. You say the ID number of the detective who was murdered at the police department tells you something. What does it tell you? Witness. What is it, Mr. Wright? We killed Goodman twice. You're grinning like a schoolgirl on prom night. No, I... It's just... I got confused. And this is news. Huh? Just come out with both guns blazing. Like you always do. Police department. The prosecutor's office. Two places. Two detectives murdered. One time. Was that not it? Actually, I happen to have a police ID number here. Or it was. Or they killed him at one place and carried him. Yeah, but... Um, there is a 30 minute distance between the two buildings. <laughs> and you being a support supportive husband. Aha! Is it yours? Thanks for that before. Uh, scare my friend, can you say this time? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> uh. <laughs> you big Jersey Mike sub. Eating sabotaging donkey. <laughs> this is probably like a prank, isn't it? You know what? It's fine. I'm waiting for these, to be honest. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Well, <laughs> do with that as you please. I don't know. <laughs> no, Your Honor. I'm a defense attorney, remember? This is the ID number of our victim, Detective Goodman. Shame on you, Rido. Personnel IDs are top secret. Det 
Detective Goodman's ID number is 584289. And this means what exactly? Huh? Wait, that ID number we heard from the chief earlier. It started with 82. Hmm, I'm, I've forgotten. I didn't even get the first number right. Again! The number the chief of police gave us was 5842189. Wait a second, right? 5842 89 Surfer won't surprise me. Wait a second, right? What does this mean? That's what I want to know. The two ID numbers are identical. In other words, the detective killed in the police department's evidence room was Bruce Goodman. What does our witness think about that? Oh, sharp as attack, Rhino. Sharp as attack. But, but wait, Detective Goodman is our victim. He was killed at 5.15 in the underground parking lot. Who in the hell? Thank you so much, Kiko Pollen. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow. <laughs> what the hell is happening? <laughs> uh, now they go around completing sentences. <laughs> Yet, a detective Bruce Goodman was also killed at the police department. Hear me out. Gumshoe is more brain dead than Larry Sex. <laughs> Don't do Gumshoe like this. Don't do my boy dick like this. <sighs> In the evidence room. The exact same time. Objection. That's impossible. So what we're saying is, the same person was killed at the same time, and in a completely different location. Order! 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 Chief, what does this mean? No. What I want to know is, why didn't I hear about this? Yes, it's top secret, fine. But I'm the prosecutor in charge of the case! Now, just wait a second, Worthy. No need to get all flustered. Your Honor, the police department has made a grave error in this case. Wait. I said wait. Or didn't you hear me? The oversight? The grave error? Mr. Edgeworth, they're yours. What? How? How dare? We informed you yesterday. I believe it was our of Officer Meekins who brought you the news. Officer Meekins? Mr. Wright, where have you heard that name before? Wait, aha! Um. Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth, uh, anywhere on the premises? And that most of the roasts I make are colder than the first victim in the fourth case is corp and the roast in the shit of Miss Lake. Oh my god. Here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I don't know how to do his voice. Like I can hear it in my brain, but I I I, I can't I can't replicate it. I don't mean him. According to Meekins, you didn't accept the report. Hard to believe. But your officer, he told me, he said that report had nothing to do with the Lana Sky incident. Detective Bruce Goodman murdered in the police department evidence room. Mr. Edgeworth, the victim's name is written right on the top of the report. Ugh. Why didn't your officer tell me? Honestly, I'm not sure if that officer was capable of making the connection. He did seem challenged. 
Wow, Emma. Wow. <laughs> In any case, this is a serious error. A gross negligence of duty on our part on your part, worthy. But sir could have submitted that report this morning to the court as evidence. Then I No such luck this time worthy, or should I say unworthy? What? Now what was the second rule of evidence law? Hmm? Well, is it right? Uh -huh. Oh, well, it's uh, number two. Registered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And how is this rule relevant? Stop just staring, chief. I know, right? It's just like so awkward. He just like stands there, like. God. <laughs> Normally, you submit a list of evidence to be used in court before the trial. This report wasn't on that list. So, what does this mean? I couldn't submit this evidence until a connection was proven in court. The connection was just proven by Rido over here. Good job, Rido, my boy. Uh huh. Uh, I, I was just doing my job. No. No! It seems we have come to the end of this trial. I know you're going through a tough time, Worthy. What with all these rumors? through a tough time worthy what with all these rumors you were even in the defendant's chair just this past December apologize for this terrible lack of due diligence on my part M mr. Edgeworth please just give me one day I'll get to the bottom of what happened it's the last thing I do you better get results this time really I have my profound apologies sir poor mr. Edgeworth I don't think there's ever been an error this serious in the history of this court. I will grant one further day as the prosecution has requested. Will that be sufficient, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Whatever your punishment for this is, for your sake, I hope it's not decisive. Very well. Court is adjourned. Huh. <sighs> Mr. Wright, so, what's going on with the case anyway? I'm, I'm a little confused. Aha, uh -huh. well, um, let's see, what is going on? The victim, Detective Bruce Goodman, was stabbed to death after 5 p.m. on the 21st. He died in the prosecutor's parking lot. And the police department's evidence room. What's this, and the evidence room part? The prosecutor's office and the police department are 30 minutes apart by car. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Or try to, at least. Alright, let's do it. But she's in good spirits. I'm not sure she's going to much, be much help with this. Don't be so sure, Mr. Wright. To finish the dark jokes sh charade, uh, the judge looks like he'd murdered children's parents and then threw them into his basement. What the hell? <laughs> what is going on inside your brain? <laughs> oh, wait, no, it's this way. Uh huh? Look, we're in this together, right? Prove that these thick rimmed glasses of mine aren't just for show. Let's go. Science awaits us. I don't think the judge is clever enough to cover up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Let 
me push this a bit further this way. Eh, there we go. Back to the parking lot we go. You know, I really don't think we should worry about the police department murder. There wasn't even a body found there. Who cares? Yeah, it was only our victim who was killed in their evidence room. No biggie. Besides, my sister would never do such a thing. I know it. That oil drum, was it empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. He just emigrated illegally and changed his name. He doesn't even have a name. <laughs> As far as we are aware, his name is Judge. <laughs> My sister erasing evidence at the crime scene? Never. Even though she says they don't get along, Emma really likes her sister. That's not it at all. It's just... We're both professionals at what we do, and I trust her. His name is Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Big words for a high school student. Well, whether there was blood or on the floor or not, the water in that oil drum washed it all away. <laughs> Ignore the strength of my science at your own peril, Mr. Wright. Huh? What's that green for? This situation calls for one thing, and that is luminol testing fluid. Full name, I am a fucking Thomas. Ugh. <laughs> oh. Listen, don't don't remind me. Don't remind me of like the six games names because <laughs> I'm still losing it over hippie Jesus. <laughs> Luminol? Blood is sticky stuff, you know. You can't just wash it away with a little water. Even if you can't see it, it's still there. But wouldn't the police already ha have already done those tests? Never trust anyone's eyes but your own, Mr. Wright. Just give it a try. M me? Why do I have to do it? I'm a minor. I can't even drink yet. We're testing blood stains with this stuff, not drinking it. Here, look. I'll lend you these glasses. Huh? You had an extra pair of those things? To test for a blood reaction, just spray the luminol on it. Like this, see? Okay, cool. Okay, let's find us some blood stains. I can see her eyes shining behind those glasses. So is this a blood stain? Uh, it's so... Uh. Emma, you're shaking. It's just... This is my first time seeing real blood. Okay. <laughs> Scientific investigation in action. Okay, we definitely know that this is a blood stain. But doesn't something strike you as odd? Scientifically speaking, of course. What's odd about this scientifically? The amount of blood? The perpetrator and Detective Goodman fought here, right? Don't you think there'd be a little more blood? I definitely think so. I mean, look at all the blood on the sole of that victim sh of the victim's shoe. Cool, somebody spilled blue sperm all over the floor. Yeah, I was thinking like the same thing. I was like, mm, what if that isn't blood? <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's a bit different to see blood and see blood that you know belongs to a crime scene, you know, like. Maybe that's just me though, I don't know. It is pretty strange. If they fought here, there have to be more blood than this. I think they decided to jerk off the exercise squad. Phoenix got some competition! No! Uh, hey, Mr. Wright. I'm gonna mark up the floor plans when we find the blood stain, okay? Pretty handy to have around, right? Uh, yeah, this stuff's pretty handy too. I saved up my allowance to buy that. 
Wait, no, not anymore. It's Edgeworth all along. He, he killed him because it was competition. <laughs> and the biggest competition is Emma herself. She does it all the time. You can't be sure that the police will reveal all their evidence in court. Sometimes they fail to mention evidence that doesn't fit with their view of the case. And let's drag that hidden evidence out into the light of day. Yeah! Feels like we're really investigating a crime now, doesn't it? Guess I should give this a spray on something suspicious- on anything suspicious. Huh. So, I wonder how that fluid of yours would react to a nice deli box? <laughs> she does look like she'd stalk the asshole! <laughs> I mean, she did say, like, she was his biggest fan or something. Miss Star! You only trust your own eyes, hmm? Not bad, you two. This day old deli box is on the house. Sorry, it's just that kind of lead in. Lead in doesn't really get my mouth watering. I have to talk to her again. You certainly put me on a, in a tight spot yesterday. My apologies, Miss Star, but. No, no, it's okay. It was my fault. <laughs> Peter ship necklace. It's not that. It's it's um. It's like um. Uh, 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 an octopus sausage. You know, like how uh, it's this really cute thing to cut sausages into octopuses or octopi or whatever. Yeah, it's it's that, but a necklace. <laughs> Oh my god, there are so many people here. What's happening? Hey guys. <laughs> An oddly shaped hairy one. <laughs> I don't think it's hairy. It's 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 a it's a it's a tentacles. Oh, we know. Is is he here? It's it's the tentacles. <laughs> I witnessed everything from that security room right there. But I was afraid that wouldn't sound convincing enough, you see. I was wrong to think that. I'm sorry. Sorry? You lied on the witness stand. That's unforgivable. Little girl, don't forget what's important here. Even if the place I witnessed the events from was different, I still saw what I saw. I saw Chief Prosecutor Sky stab a man in cold blood, cold blood, blood, and that testimony still stands. Uh, I swear it on my honor as a detective. She stabbed Goodman. You're not a detective. You're not. You're you're not though. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> you know this photograph has something important to tell us. What? So, you were a detective, weren't you, Miss Star? Yes, it was a long time ago. Well, two years ago. No matter how hardened the criminal when they faced me. They coughed it up. Coughed it up. They confessed. They babbled like babies, you know. It may seem like a demon sometimes, but I can be an angel too. I wouldn't doubt it. Every day I dragged the dirt out of the mouths of suspect after suspect. And before long, they called me... Cough up queen. Oh, and here I thought someone had, forgot had gotten food poisoning from your lunches. And you were let go of fire? Thought that I had found my dream job when I became an, in an, in an, an investigator. And if these prim and proper prosecutors hadn't let me go, I'd still be one today. It's all because of that case, the SL9 incident. SL9? Wait, she doesn't mean... Um, okay, no, she won't. Oh, actually, she does. Never mind, and on that note. Goodman. Goodman was the head detective on that case, you know. Really? That knife was evidence from that case, the murder weapon.
and was due for transferal the very day that Goodman was killed. As I suspected, SL9 isn't over. Not yet. Do you think you could tell us more about the SL9 incident? Yeah, I'm glad that it was rejected too. Okay. Good that you regret it. <laughs> Why won't you tell us about SL9? You know what? Fuck that. Uh, wrong way. This one. This blood must be from when Lana. No, my sister isn't the murderer. So she did call you, didn't she? At the time of the crime? And her right hand is bandaged. Hey, just whose size whose side whose side are you on? This has nothing to do with taking sides. So this means that Lana's hand had blood on it. This just keeps getting worse. Okay, I don't think there's anything here. <laughs> oh, okay, I can't actually look at it. Oh, it says Emma Sky on the bottom, that's cute. No, I'm looking for blood! <laughs> Taking that picture from the guard room. But, oh, even I get flustered sometimes. I was like, no, you couldn't have taken that picture from the guard room. But then, like, oh, you mean like you could have taken a picture from the guard room? <laughs> so you went straight to the scene of the crime. I rushed forward to where the chain link, chain link fence in an effort to stop the murder. when I took it, this photo, yes. In other words, five minutes after the crime? Those five minutes were the whole problem. Hole in my testimony, as it were. Five minutes weren't the problem, Miss Star. You lying was the problem. Listen, little girl. I've had my testimony disregarded before. And, it, and I wasn't going to have it disregarded again. Just like that time. That time? incident really opened up my eyes to the truth. We're nothing to them. Disposable. Disposable? To who? Two years ago, it was the biggest case I'd ever handled. The police and the prosecutors were desperate for decisive evidence. So they didn't solve it? On the contrary. It was solved quite cleanly. The criminal was caught and executed. E executed? Yes, the criminal got what was coming to him. It doesn't get any cleaner than that. The only problem was, they never did find decisive evidence. Not a shred. What? But the criminal was executed, right? On the basis of evidence, of a sort. Made up evidence. What? You mean they executed someone with fabricated evidence? The best part came several months after the trial. Every detective involved with the case was dealt with. Some were demoted to patrolmen, others found themselves out, out, uh, out of a job. And you were one of those? I saw one other person who knew well. Wait, could it be... Exactly, Detective Jake Marshall. Oops, I mean, Police Department Security Detail Officer Jake Marshall. Professional detectives we investigated that case from every angle. Jake was particularly determined. And then, he was over. And he was demoted. Cowboy man. However, he hasn't forgotten, and neither have I. 
You haven't forgotten SL9? There was another side to that case, a hidden side. That's what we're after now. And no one up in their fancy offices can stop us. Wait. Those lunches you sell? There's only one reason I come to sell lunches in this accursed office. I come here to meet old friends. Boyfriends that can help me investigate. Miss Star's own boyfriends. How many does she have anyway? Just when all the detectives on SL9 have disappeared, we find new evidence. There has to be a connection. So, rookie. What? Seems like you're serious about investigating this case. Yes. Then you should take this. A Salisbury steak lunch? I know a certain guy who might help you if you tempt him with his treat. Excellent for putting Officer Marshall in a good mood? Okay. Um, Miss Star? Officer Marshall, is he your, uh, are you his? Are you g g going out? What do you want to know? I was just wondering what happened to him. A long time ago, when he was helping my sister with the cases, he was so nice. He got along so well with my sister, it made me jealous. And he was nice to me back to me too back then. This would be when Officer Marshall was a detective. But now, I'm always so cold. Jake and I are merely cooperating on this investigation. We're putting the past to rest, as it were. Nothing more than that. I I see. Thank you. Officer Jake Marshall. Hmm. Alright. Jakey boy. Ugh. It's even busier here today than it was yesterday. The detectives are running around so fast they're blurring. I suppose it makes sense. A detective did get killed a hair after all. So, the evidence room, the scene of the crime. According to the pamphlet we got at the front desk, here it is. Just like a kid at an amusement park. Ooh, a real crime scene. Let's go take a look. We just were at a crime scene. <laughs> Ma'am? What's with the decor in this place? It's very eccentric. According to the pamphlet, this is the guard station for the evidence room. So beyond that door is the evidence room. The scene of the crime? It sure seems that way. Oh! Oh! What's wrong? It's those cacti! They're so prickly! It's so imposing, it's hard to think straight. If you can't handle the cacti, stay out of the desert. What I want to know is, if this is a guard station, where is the guard? I have a feeling I know who he is already. Hmm, gee, I wonder, I wonder what gave it away. <laughs> Again, that's not what I want to do. Can I... Examine, hold on. I can't examine the, the whiskey? The whiskey on his desk? Okay. Alabama man? No, Texas man. Texas man from uh, West LA. <laughs> Yipes, these sure are prickly. They must be the real deal. I would think just one big one would be sufficient. These cacti are a lot like my sister, actually. How so? Encased in a cold, rigid shell with spines pointing in every direction. Just like her. <laughs> West LA, Texas man. I'm not so sure I see the resemblance. It's more an attitude thing than a physical similarity. Alright. There's a security guard uniform hanging there. It looks more like a costume than a uniform, honestly. Canadian man born in Texas who lives in China. What? <laughs> a leather jacket, leather pants, leather... What was that called again? A punchy? A punchy? Pinchy? I know! A poochie! Um... Wait. Maybe that wasn't it. It's a poncho, but I think I'll keep that information to myself for the time being. It looks like there's a video feed from the evidence room here. There's a light blinking below the monitor. 
It says recording. I thought we could use this computer to check on who went in and out of there. This swinging door makes the place look like some kind of saloon. But look, it's nailed shut. You can't get in that way. Of course not. If you went in through here, the cactus would fall over. Ouch! I'd say I'd be more of a yeah myself. Texas. <laughs> Look on the floor. A lasso. Hmm. Looks like it's set up to trap something. A trap? Here? Wait, I know. Maybe someone was trying to catch a wild bull in here. You can just jump over. Yeah. But the lasso was something. I couldn't read that. Sorry. You sure have an active imagination. The evidence room is beyond that door. Let's just walk in. It won't open. You thought it'd be open? I think we need someone's permission to go in there first. Is Emma high? Emma is 16, so I doubt it. <laughs> this place is charged with frantic energy as always. She is high on imagination. She is high on science. <laughs> Please. Isn't that... One steak lunch, please. Oh, it's you. Detective Gumshoe! Now's no time for chit-chat, pal. I'm a busy man. What I re really need is a steak lunch from Lunchland. Oh, you mean one of these? Actually, it's not for sale. I think I just heard the sound of his heart breaking. Now's no time for despair. We've caught our criminal. Now we just need evidence. The criminal, you mean... You heard about the stabbing in the police department evidence room, right, pal? On the same day that a pro detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department? And the perpetrator. Do you have a suspect? There was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. The biggest scandal to hit the station in ages. Everything's topsy turvy. But Detective Gumshoe, who was it? Listen, pal. All I know is I need me a steak lunch pronto. Standing around here talking isn't going to fill my belly. Wait! Don't leave! If you want to know more, head on down to the detention center, pal. Questioning should be over, so I figure he's down there having a good cry. Later. He ran off to the evidence room. Well, this investigation is off to a running start. Still, I do feel better about things. A little. I mean, they caught the person who stabbed Detective Goodman, didn't they? Uh, yeah, I guess they did. I should not go too far down that road right now. Right now. Things will just get confusing. Oh no, I know exactly who this is. What was that? Sir, that's what I'm saying. Me, a perpetrator? I I'd say I, I was the perpetrator against, sir. That's what I'd say. Oh, 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 hi. Greetings, sir. I know who you are. Oh, uh, yes. I'm here, sir. At the request of the chief, sir. I got your report, sir. Officer Meekins, so you're a guard here at the detention center? No, sir. I'm not, sir. I'm a little lost patrolman, like a little lost slam, sir. I get it. You're here to deliver a report. No, sir. I, uh... How should I say this? Wait, he isn't... Is he? You... Officer Meekins... You didn't, did you? Uh, fuck. <laughs> Perpetrator Officer Meekins reporting, sir. What? What? No, this is an unexpected turn of events. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> I don't even have it that loud. <laughs> sir, I'm a patrolman with. General affairs, sir. Sir! Ow, oh, I can hear you fine, Officer Meekins. 
I had some business that day, sir, and so I went to the evidence room, sir. The guard station in front of the room was empty, sir. So normally there's a guard at the evidence room. That's right, sir. Because evidence is kept in the evidence room, sir. Now the security officer was none other than Officer Marshall. M Marshall? How are you surprised? <laughs> then, sir, I happened to glance at the security room monitor. That's when I saw him, sir. A suspicious person in the evidence room. A su suspicious person, sir. A suspicious person. Oh my god. What the heck is this guy doing? So what happened then? After that, sir, I... I... Everything went white. I saw red. I blacked out. And when I came to, it was here. And the detention center. How long were you out? Days? Um, might I ask, what happened to your hand? Sir, there was no one to bandage me, sir. So I did what I could to wrap it up, sir. Bandage on his hand. Just like Miss Sky. Yet another similarity between this case and the other and the, and, the, and the one at the prosecutor's office. First things first, tell us how you hurt your hand. About your hand. Did that happen during the course of the crime? Well you see, sir. Yeah. Uh, don't you think you should just confess? But sir, sir, but there was nothing I could do. Nothing you could do? Sir, to tell the truth, sir, when it happened. When the detective pointed that knife at me, I just hollered, sir. And the next thing I knew, I was unconscious. The next thing you knew, you were... Huh? Then when I opened my eyes... I was alone in the evidence room, sir. All alone. Alone because... Because Detective Goodman had disappeared. What? Then when I looked down, I was gushing blood from my hand, sir. Oh, the shock. Oh, the sorrow, sir. Can you imagine how I felt? The victim's body... disappeared? Hmm... That's some story. Um, I don't mean to pry, but you are the perpetrator, correct? You killed Detective Bruce Goodman in the evidence room, right? Sir, please don't look at me with those sad puppy dog eyes, sir. If you have to label me as a as perpetrator or victim, sir, then label me victim. I would, but you happen to be in detention alive and well at that. Ah, oh, yes, well, that's true, sir. I suppose you could say that. Did you know the victim, Detective Goodman? Well, sir, if I had to label him as a stranger or a total stranger, then I'd say he leans heavily on the total stranger side. side. Yeah, okay. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much for the follow and thank you for s sticking around in the chat a while. I really appreciate that. I hope you have a great day and uh, hope to see you in my next stream. <laughs> Take care, dude. So, you didn't know him. Sir, I work in a tiny department devoid of light or other creature comforts. God, <laughs> I don't know any detectives. So, if he was at a, he was a total stranger, why why did you why did you stab him? Sir, I had no intention of killing him, sir. None. Nor do I have any c recollection of c killing him, sir. At least someone around here is more confused than I am. What can I show him that's like gonna do any good for us? <laughs> I don't think I have anything. Criminal affairs. Let's go here. Oh, everyone looks deadly serious here. And there was a vicious murder of a detective down at the police department. Yes, but the same detective was also killed at the same time in the prosecutor's lot. Uh, it makes my head hurt. Well, first things first, let's go check out the police department Christ crime scene. Yes, you sound dead set on investigating. But don't mess up or we could wind up dead. I doubt an anyone wants more mysteries or dead bodies around here right now. But it doesn't look like anyone's going to help us much either. Okay, cool. No, I still can't get in there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back in. 
Show him the knives. It's for you. Okay, no, that's not it. I'm scared of knives. That's it, sir. Last night, sir. That's the one. Oh, it was. Okay, never mind. It was an apple, sir, in my dream, sir. And I was I was being peeled. On second thought, you don't have to look at the knife. He's overreacting to the knife, but I guess it's been through a lot. Okay, so not the knife. <laughs> Take a look at this. Hey! That's it, sir! That's it! That's it! Ah, fuck. That's what? My head was blank until this very moment. But sir, now I remember. I remember, sir. I was an apple being peeled. <laughs> you mean you remember what happened? Correct! That card. That card was the cause of it all. This ID card? Exactly, sir. That's exactly it. Nothing could be more exact, sir. Nothing. I better pry into this one a little deeper. Oh, yes. Can you tell me what it is you do remember? Well, sir, you might say I'm a lost little patrolman. A lost little lamb, if you will. I didn't know Mr. Detective Goodman was the one that was in the evidence room. And that's why I thought he looked suspicious. Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to show me his ID card. Well, that sounds pretty much by the book so far. That's right, sir. That's what I've been trying to tell you. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing. Suddenly he pointed a knife at me. What? Sir, I assure you I was as flustered as you are right now. So I whooped and leapt at him. Detective Goodman pointed a knife at him? Do unto others before they do unto you. My own father's words, sir. <laughs> what happened then? Well, my eyes, sir. Everything went white. When I awoke, I was here. Right. So, Officer Meekins, why was it that they arrested you? What do you mean, Emma? Let's look at what we know. Now, Officer Meekins didn't know Detective Goodman. And the victim, whom he met at the scene of the crime, didn't show his ID card. In other words, we have no way of knowing if the victim was really the victim. And if this body just disappeared from the evidence room, we don't even know if anyone actually died. That's it, sir. That, that's what I wanted to say. That is, I did say something along those lines. Huh? But you still ended up here. He told me that it had to be him, sir. On that day, at that time, Detective Goodman was definitely in the evidence room. That's what they said. But you don't remember the events clearly? No, but the videotape is quite clear. Huh? Videotape? From the security camera. The crime! My crime. The crime I swore to stamp out. It's there. It's me. It's on the tape. And you waited until now to tell us this? I'm sorry, really sorry, sir. I'll hand over my badge, I don't deserve it. No thanks, I have my own. Well, I guess we better go check out the crime scene. Dun, 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 dun. Wrong. Well, it worked, apparently. Hey, Mr. Wright, look who's standing at the chief of detective's desk. It's police chief Gant. Are you sure this is all, hmm? You know what it means if there's anything missing. So I'm sure it's most definitely totally, most likely totally perfect. We checked all of the, his drawers, lockers, garbage cans, bags, coat pockets, hats. Under his seat cushion, behind his computer monitor, inside his personal coffee machine. I see. Well, if anything does turn up, you call me right away, deal. Yes, sir! We'll scour the place again, sir. The chief of detectives looks a little flustered. Aha, right, oh my boy. How you been? Swim much? Oh ho ho, Chief Gant, reporting for duty, sir! Why are you saluting him, Mr. Right? Wait, <laughs> did they say something? Um, is Edgeworth going to be okay? Oh, worthy. You know, they're doing a little inquiry committee with him. Sounds like an inquisition. Yep, well, they've had no end of trouble with the boys since last year. 
could mean the incident on Gord Lake. It doesn't look good having a top prosecutor sit in the defendant's seat, does it? You, you got someone else found guilty in that case, right, right, oh? Fun karma. A legend he was, undefeated in his 40 year career. But in court, you fixed it so he was caught for forging evidence. Wait, I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. In any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of a turmoil, you might say. Why, they do just about anything to restore their reputation. Now, depending on what that inquiry, inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. What? It's downright odd, I tell you. The detective getting killed on their turf, too, I mean. They're being the prosecutors, I assume. Scientifically speaking, it's impossible. Yes, but that's what the evidence is saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time. That's what it says. What evidence is this? No, no, Raido. I can't give away all, of your, all our secrets just like that. What should you watch tomorrow? And this in particular. Well, it's a little sensitive and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much anyway. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff. Secrets. Can't stand them. But you know, it's a full-time job just keeping the chief of detectives traps shut. He was the one you were picking on earlier? Huh? You saw that? Oops. I wonder what it was that he wanted the chief of detectives to do. Let's see if we can kind of discreetly ask him. Sorry you had to see that. Uh, what exactly did the chief of police want you to do? See over there? That's Goodman's desk. He wanted me to check it out. Check it for anything that might be a clue. He took away every last piece of garbage in the trash can. So nothing belonging to Detective Goodman is still here. Of course not. Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Sure, why not? Not important, he didn't even finish writing it. It's a lost item report, but it's only half complete. A lost item? Did Detective Goodman lose something? The date on it is February 21st. Better make a note of that just in case. I should really get back to investigating the police department crisis. Okay, we get it. Well, uh, I want to take a look at this. ID 5-9. Think I need to go to sleep. Oh, yeah, no, no, no worries. Thank you so much for dropping by. I really appreciate that. Uh, I hope you have a good night's sleep. <laughs> and I uh, hope to see you again next time I'm live. Because I will I will make my way through the entire Ace Attorney franchise. I am not joking. Except for like Dai Gekden Saibang. Not even the cops remember the numbers. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow, EV Master 88. Okay, let me check this. Blue Badger is still writhing around today. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's dancing. Speaking of dancing, the whole police department has been dancing around like crazy since yesterday. Can I take out his batteries? I just can't help but feel he's going to do something naughty. Emma? What? <laughs> What does that even mean? Well, this place is as classy today as it was yesterday. And I'm sure it'll still be just as classy tomorrow, Emma. 
Incidentally, Edgeworth's not here. Sure, he's off doing important investigations. I hope that's what he's doing. I guess we'll have to come back. I just wanted to see if there was anything up here because I haven't been there yet. Alright, let me try the... Nope, wrong button. Because of the handprint. I saw that. Uh, who was it that mentioned the... It was Benki. Benki, Benki mentioned the, the handprint earlier. And yeah, it's, it's always been there. I noticed it like the first time we saw him too, so it's always been there. I just wanted to like make sure. Yeah, no. Oh, permission to enter, dumbass. Actually, I was wondering if I could, if I could ask you a favor. Hmm? Well, I never thought the day would come when Raido asked me for help. I was wondering if we could investigate the evidence room. No, Raido. Actually, I'm sorry. I don't need to investigate after all. Raido, please. Do I look like a selfish man? Huh? Heck, if anyone asked me, sir, can I borrow 50 bucks? I'd give them 50 bucks, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's content. Knock yourself out. It just goes to show you, never know until you ask. For you. Here, you can borrow this. Huh. Hey, this is the detective's ID card, isn't it? It's a special card for guests, so don't lose it. Yes, sir. It's an honor. Just run, about, run along and do your best now. Later, folks. Fucking soul-sucking owl eyes again. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty cool on my lapel, doesn't it? Just think, a real ID. You seem happy. Yes, sir. Because, sir, we get to go into the evidence room now, sir. I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. Yeah, let's get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> The evidence room is beyond that door. And we have the ID card from Chief Gantz. Let's just walk in. He won't open. Aha! The card reader is turned off, see? What is that security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, well. What's made my bambina sky so gray? Uh, Officer Marshall! Why does it have to be him? What's that? Why does it have to be him look for? As you may have surmised, this here is my saloon. Oh, we're here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw! That card you got there on your chest? That's better than the sheriff's badge in these parts. Y Yeehaw? Well, what you standing there for? Get along, little doggies. The crime scene's waiting. Looks like the card reader's on again. While we're here, I was wondering if we, we, we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I got no mind to tangle with you, Hombres. You're busy, then. Did I say that? I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. Actually, you said you had no mind to tangle with us, Hombres. Um, I was wondering if we could talk to you. <laughs> Sorry, Bambina, but I'm off to roam the lands like a tumbleweed on the wide prairie. Like a gunslinger loading his six shooter, I say a little prayer. What was that all about, Mr. Wright? I think he was just too hungry to talk. You're just saying that because his stomach was growling. You have no idea what he was talking about either. The meal, yes! I was just thinking about that, I was like. Oh! <laughs> well, in any case, we need to get cracking on this investigation pronto. Smell. That reminds me of Texas. So, Officer Marshall, you're from Texas? No, I just saw a special on television the other day. Is this for my baby? Uh, yeah, Miss Star. What's this? What? What's wrong? F Filet steak lunch. I see, I see. 
Nihangi. I don't see. I wonder what it means. All right, Bambina, you win. Ask everything. Finally, it seems like he's willing to talk. Officer Marshall, you're in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job, and I'm grateful for it. Actually, Officer Meekins at the detention told us. Ah, uh, that poor little doggy. Poor guy. I keep getting his name wrong and calling him Miki. Meekly. He told us something. He said that when the stabbing occurred, you weren't at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this. But since I got demoted from detective two years ago, well, it might not look it, but I lost my fire for the job, you know. Lost my fire for the job, you know. He says as he fucking just downs his flask. Sure. <laughs> So, what were you doing around 5.15 when the murder took place? Well... I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed, Zippy. Note, he was riding down the highway on his horse named Zippy. There's no need for people here anyhow. These newfangled machines do a bang-up job of keeping an eye on the place. He was blackout drunk. <laughs> you mean the security camera system? I don't take to machines much. Kinda like that stewed broccoli they sneak in next to your steak, you know. Kinda like that, okay. Miss Starr told us something. She said that you were a detective until two years ago. It was always my dream to be a raw hat wrangler on the scene of the crime. That's all gone now, like a drinking hole on in a prairie fire. You're still investigating the SL9 incident with Miss Starr, aren't you? That was my case. It's all solved on the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. That's all there is to it. What kind of case was it anyway? You've heard the name so many times, but no one tells us what actually happened. There's some things you're better off not knowing, Bambina. Anyway, that case is officially dead as of two days ago. Two days ago? Day of our case. That's right. The evidence transferals. Edgeworth was talking about the transferals too. Sorry, but could you explain what this whole transferal thing is about? My lips are sore. We keep only evidence from solved cases in this room. They're kept here under the presiding detective supervision for two years. So we could reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake, see? So what happens to the evidence after two years? It goes to sleep forever in the underground vault at the county sheriff's department. That's what we call a transferal. We do it every February. I see now. Transferal is like a funeral for all cases. Two years after a case is solved, it's closed forever. Dead. Never to be reopened again. Never to be reinvestigated. That happened to SL9 two days ago. I know that maybe two other machines what maybe two other machines in here do. Only two of them? But there must be a dozen. Like I said, Bambina, me and machines well. I like them about as much as I like stewed cauliflower with mistakes. The easiest ones to understand are these here security cameras. Those are the ones that Officer Meekins mentioned. If nothing happens, the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. And Officer Meekins and Detective Goodman, are they on one of those tapes? I reckon they might be. You're the security guard, and you reckon? One more thing. When you go into the evidence room, you need an ID card. Just the card reader by the door. The card reader leaves a record for every ID card that passes through. ID card record. Card record. Yeah, I've seen that somewhere before. Sorry, Bambina. Can't show you more than that. Huh? I haven't heard whether this is related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. Maybe there's some way I can prove that record is tied to the stabbing. <laughs> Do 
See this? This is the victim's ID card. Oh, the one that was on, on the ground in the parking lot? The number on this is 5842189. Oh my god, I actually remembered it correctly earlier. Officer Marshall, show us that ID card record again. Card record again. Look, the fourth number. It's a perfect match. It was used at Pi 14, right before the stabbing. Once more, there's only one of them cars in the world. So when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. Wait, what did Officer Meekins say? He entered the evidence room and asked the man to display his ID card. He asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? The thing suddenly he pointed a knife at me. If he had his ID card then, why would he have pointed a knife at Officer Meekins? Alright, compadre, you win. I guess I can give you this ID card record. I got an ID. Maybe I should show this list to other people with IDs here. The evidence room is beyond that door. I turned on the card reader. Go have yourself a bowl, partners. And I have the ID card. A real ID card. Let's get this investigation started already. You have to admire Marshall for finding an aesthetic and sticking to it. Um, cowboy core. <laughs> Evidence room, sector three. It's quiet. The investigation must be over here. So this is the evidence room? It's really kind of like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. Nice try, Mr. Wright. Y you can't scare me. Ah! Whoa. Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. Wouldn't recommend going around smacking ghosts in the head, pal. So is it true? What I heard? Do I look like a selfish man? Like if anyone asked me if I'm bad, yeah, it is. Go ahead, investigate the room here. Okay. Yeah, it's true. So chief of police can't we'll loan anyone 50 bucks? Even me? Also, that's what you were talking about. I figured he was talking about that. Actually, I was put in charge of the investigation for today. Just for today? Boss for a day. Guess what? You got permission from the chief, so now you boss for a day. Gee, thanks. First of all, you want to have this. I'm gonna take a look at the floor plans. Those are some floor plans. That surely is the plan of a floor. <laughs> uh. So, Detective Gumshoe, your boss for the day? That's right. It's an honor. Floor plan. After all, the murder took place right here in the police department. But if you're a boss, why are you all alone? Where are your underlings? I'm using yesterday's findings to prepare for tomorrow's trial. In other words, you got kicked out of the investigation. Again. I'm adamant, though. I'm going to take control and put this case to rest. My own evidence locker, pal. You have a locker in here, too, Detective Gumption? <laughs> of course. I'm a detective, after all. You gave me a locker that only I can open, pal. Only you can open? This place is more high-tech than you might think. Every locker is fixed so that only one detective can open it. Using their ID card? Oh, that's the thing, pal. ID cards can be lost. Why well, I'm on my third card since entering the force already. That sounds like a lot. Yeah, but even I can't lose my own right hand. Right hand? Oh, you mean your fingerprint? Exactly, pal. The lock for each locker is coated with the fingerprint. Ow. So the only locker we can open is our own. Funny, they look like normal lockers. These are the latest model. There's a trick to the handle, see? The 
handles? On the other side of the handles is a sensor. And if the wrong person touches it... Zap! You get a shock! If that's what happened, my hand will be black and smoking every day. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people in the forest that don't know about the fingerprint locks. I'll always believe in Mr. Edgeworth, no matter what happens. So, Mr. Edgeworth is with the inquiry committee now, right? Inquiry, inquiry or something. They're trying to figure out who is responsible for the mess up in court today. I see. Because this is what you call fate. Mr. Edgeworth just can't get away from that case. That case? Yeah, that, that case. The SL9 incident, of course. That was the beginning of the end for Mr. Edgeworth. Maybe we can get him to tell us more about the case. Uh... Detective Goodman's note and that switchblade knife. I bet Edgeworth was the most surprised of anyone. Because of the SL9 connection? Floor plan... Floor... Floor plan... Sounds like the name of a medicine. Oh my god. That was Mr. Edgeworth's first big case, you know. Two years ago. That was the first time the world knew Edgeworth was the man, man to be feared. But why would evidence from that case turn up now? I guess it's not over, pal. Maybe there are some loose ends left on that case. Now that was a bloody violent case. Violent? So it was a murder. Serial killing. Serial killing? Maybe I don't want to get involved in this after all. The killer made a mistake and Mr. Edgeworth built his case around that Dunabin. And this was two years ago? That put Mr. Edgeworth right in the spotlight and started the rumor mill. Rumors? About forged evidence? It was supposed to be all cleaned up with the transfer all the other day. It was the last job he ever did. Detective Goodman, that is. Huh? What do you mean? Detective Goodman was a detective in charge of the SL9 incident, see? So... so that switchblade knife... The victim took the knife out of the evidence locker himself? What's this? Blood! It's a little worn, but there's definitely a handprint there. It looks like someone tried to wipe, wipe it off. M Mr. Wright! What if there are other blood stains left in the room? We should use her testing fluid to check it out. Yes, let's go! That must have been one massive pool of blood. Never seen anything like it. I'm not a professional. What's your opinion, detective? Hmm. Pale blue blood. Maybe Detective Goodman was actually an alien. It's proof that something really happened in front of this locker. I'll make a note of it on the floor plans. Hey! If you didn't want my opinion, you shouldn't have asked. Oh, gosh, you. I will gum shoot too. I knew it. This is someone's right handprint. What? What's the matter, detective? This locker is mine. It's yours? Please. You have to help me when they come to take come to take me away. Promise you'll testify that I could wouldn't harm a fly. You'll do that for me, won't you, pals? This is an important clue. I'll jot it down on the floor right floor plans. Counting on you guys, believe me. You can't trust the police. What? But you're a detective! Yeah, I think it's safe to say that there is no more blood anywhere. Someone left 
the glove here. Only one. Detective Gumshoe, maybe? You go, pal. You me out to be some kind of absent-minded detective. That's evidence from the case, you know. You mean SL9? It does have a tag on it. The top locker? Oh, there! Damn, I'm dumb. There's something sticking out of here. Looks like a shirt. I guess it must be evidence for some case. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe put this here. There you go, pal, making me out like out to be some kind of slob. I'm not responsible for the evidence here. That said, I bet that evidence locker was opened recently. How do you know? If you leave things hanging out like that, the evidence gets dirty or ripped. The guard checks on that kind of stuff to notify the detective responsible. How many times have I have, have I had him breathing, breathing down my neck about some silly evidence? Sounds like Detective Gumshoe leaves have evidence hanging out a lot too. I bet he doesn't tuck in his shirt under that trench coat either. If you're going to talk behind someone's back, don't do it right in front of them, pal. Open, and the red indicator light above the door is lit. That locker is coated with Detective Goodman's fingerprint. Detective Goodman's locker? Are you sure it's okay to leave it open like that? Well, it'd be hard to get it open again if we closed it. It's empty. We must have taken the contents elsewhere. Where's the saw and paint doing here? It's the dawn of time. True art has always been a war against oppression. True art? I notice that there is blue and yellow paint here. Perhaps we're witnessing the birthplace of the blue badger? Well, you might say this is my studio. No, there was no blood on that one, I know, because I'm, I sprayed everything on that side. Should have reacted at least once, but I can go over it, I'll go over it one more time, it's fine. In the evidence room? Allow me to say one thing speaking as a detective. If I see a piece of evidence I know nothing about, I see nothing. Okay, wait. I, I press present like a dumbass. Oh, actually, never mind. <laughs> you got a point. I'm dumb. Why am I getting a reaction here? There's no reason for the murderer to touch this spot if he's fled out the door. This just might be something. This just might be something significant. Hey, that's some pretty amazing stuff you got there, pal. What, this? It's called luminol testing fluid. Where'd you get your hands on that? Huh? I'd like to get some too. I'll just borrow 50 bucks from the chief. Where do you get this, Emma? I always buy it by mail order. Well, I better jot this down on the floor plans. says SL911. I guess this is another piece of evidence from that case. No, I never did care for the word tag. It's confusing. What's so confusing about that? Do you know how many other words sounds like it? Bag, gag, nag, lag, zag. Zag? Is that a word? Do you challenge me? What are we playing a word game now? Do 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 do. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> hmm. This is my crowning achievement, my masterpiece, you might say. 
But art is always misunderstood, pal. Art? He was dancing proudly on the day of the award ceremony. But there were, were a lot of people coming and going after the ceremony. No worries, Pengi. I will be here. God knows we're not even halfway and we're five and a half hours in. Though, to be fair, I took like 30 minutes off just eating, so... So he took the blue badger away for a while. Really? Why? Well, they said it was shameful or something like that. Shameful! I toiled night and day! I sympathize with Detective Gumshoe, but I can see why they moved it. It's nothing that's related to the case at hand. Here. Wow, someone must have broken something big to make all these pieces. Detective Gumshoe, perhaps? Here you go, pal, making me out to be some kind of hooligan. It's apparently from the case. The case. The case? The April 9 incident, pal. See the sticker on the on one of the pieces there? Another piece of SL9 evidence. Take a closer look. I wonder what shape these pieces were in before whatever it was broke. You want to try and put it back together? Good luck, pal. That's no job for amateurs. Well, I spent a good three hours on that before I had to give up. That's why I always carry around a tube of glue. Well, this piece looks like the bottom. Let's try putting the rest in place. We did it, but some of the pieces are missing. Yeah, I got that far too in two minutes myself. The problem is finishing it. <laughs> what kind of glue is she carrying that can hold together that? Uh, well... <sighs> what, gorilla glue? <laughs> were some pieces stolen? I bet they were missing to begin with. Still... It doesn't look like the most stable kind of jar. I kind of understand how it got broken. This place is stuffed with evidence, stuffed with dreams. I'm not so sure about the dreams. Huh. Won't open. Did you really think it would? Hey pal, our security is high tech around here. Look, they're 
hard to make out, but there are some red stains here. Hmm, looks like blood. Do you think Detective Goodman's blood somehow got... Oh, do you think Detective Goodman's blood somehow got on this when he was stabbed? Not likely. This blood looks like it's been here for months, maybe longer. The shard was evidenced in the SL9 incident. That might be when the blood got on it. This thing doesn't have a bottom. That's weird. I wonder which side is up. Better yet, what's the purpose of a bottomless jar? At least it doesn't collect dust inside, right? Oh, of course, I need to ask him about... about the this. Could you take a look at this? This is the ID card record of the people who came in on here on the day of the stabbing. I heard the rumors. So it was Goodman who came in here at the time of the murder. Whoa! What is it? That second number. It's not your ID number, is it, De Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth! What? The second number on this list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. What is this number? So his is the 8730579. Interesting. Also interesting that he knows Edgeworth's number out of all of them. Why would Edgeworth have come to the evidence room? Hey pal, look at the time. Is there something you needed to be going to? It's just that Mr. Edgeworth's inquiry committee should be letting out soon. I'm going to go give them my report of the for the day. It might help, you know. A report? You mean the note written on the back of that flyer? The one that says nothing but no problems? Hey, it's Mr. Edgeworth we're talking about. I'm sure he can use a report like this. I believe in him. Who needs enemies when you've got friends like Detective Gumshoe? I'm off, pal. Later. I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say, too. Apologies. It's you! <laughs> Have we met somewhere? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, something like that. I beg your leave. So long. What? Is Edgeworth here? There, standing by the window. A teacup in his hand. Okay. So he did actually call for him. Okay, I was like, what? I was really confused there. Right. He has the hotel bring him tea service? Mr. Edgeworth, you're back from the district prosecutor's office inquiry? Oh my god. I am. By the way, Detective Gumshoe was looking for you. Ah oh, yes, he brought me the latest information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to console me somehow. Um, the real info is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I think this whole thing is really taking a toll on him. Oh, right! I better check this now. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage? Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, that's true. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? Please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. The Chief of Police? He wanted evidence for a case that wrapped up half a year ago. 
He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. But it was sold, right? It would have to be if the evidence was already filed. Chief is never one to explain himself. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case it was? I can't say. It really has nothing to do with the current case. Now I'm curious about this other case. I'd better, better make a note of it. Stubborn as always, I told you this has nothing to do with the current case. So, how did the inquiry committee go? Actually, they decided to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communications error during the investigation. Concealing evidence? Yes, apparently there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning, but lucky this time. Again. Again? I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. Are you okay for the trial tomorrow? But I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney. However, something happened? They gave control of the investigation over to the police department. The police department? Police department. Yes, any further investigation for this case will be di directed by the chief of police, Gantt. I can do nothing but wait for his res his results. I see. Why, I ask you. Why? All along, I've done only what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still, I've never seen him this out of sorts. Uh, let me show you... I know you. You've probably got a hold of some information already, right? It all has to do with that case you were on, the SL9 incident. And some dark suspicion you were wrapped up in. You're the man who revived the worst memory of my life. I figured I'd be telling you about this sooner or later. He must be talking about his father's mur murder in that elevator. Okay, Edgeworth. Why don't you tell me about it? Tell me the truth. The SL9 incident was a heinous serial killing serial killing case. The head of the investigation investigation was a deputy chief of police at the time, Damon Gant. That wacky old coot was involved in the case two years ago too then. He was a top officer and it was my first time working with him. I was nervous. Oh, you get nervous too, Mr. Edgeworth? What I want to know is why... Why was the deputy chief of police on the investigation? In truth, I used slightly more extreme methods than normal. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, the blood would be on my hands. We won our guilty verdict, and the killer was executed. Wait, he you didn't. Of course not. I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to win a trial. However, I do have a code, and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma, the chief prosecutor wanted to know something. My sister? What? If you were still studying forensic science? Huh? Y yes, of course. Why, just today, Mr. Wright and I were using this... Luminal testing fluid. Hmm. Well then, you might have use for this. Aluminum powder for taking fingerprints? It's been chemically treated for better adhesion. For me? Are you sure? We are the enemy, you know. I have no say in today's investigation. Do as you will. Edgeworth, I'm really... No need to thank me. Here, take your powder and these fingerprint files for every everyone involved. I... Uh, thanks. How about giving these to Detective Gumshoe as well? Well, let's get going. One last investigation. Right. I do seem to remember seeing a suspicious handprint somewhere. For his husband. I can't get closer with this, can I? Just give him the benefit of the doubt. Okay, this is the same thing. That's really okay, cool. 
Wrong button. One second. Okay, I can use it here. <laughs> Our investigation turned up a suspicious handprint. Here, and this blood on the detective's evidence locker. Let's use the secret weapon we just borrowed. Right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So let's choose the finger that will have left behind the clearest print. I really can tell the difference at a glance. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger. Let's go with this one. Just because. Okay, now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. Emma's starting to get that sparkle in her eyes. First, we sprinkle the aluminum powder around. How do you do that? Okay, whatever, with the A button. Looks like that did the trick. The aluminum powder adheres completely to the prints. Once the powder is well spread, just blow away the excess. But it wasn't even a full thumbprint. How do I do that? With the X button, okay, cool. That looks like fun. Might take some time getting used to them. It's fine, it won't go up your nose or anything. You just pour the powder on thick and blow away the extra. Those are the basics of fingerprinting, Mr. Wright. Guess I better give it a try. Aha! You did it! You found one! But this looks nothing like a fingerprint. Hmm, now that you mention it, I guess it doesn't. What does it mean? I think it means we're out of luck. Out of luck? The person who left this finger, this handprint, must have worn gloves. Don't tell me we've been wasting our time here. Hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. But it does seem a shame. While we're at it, why don't we look for other prints? Forbidden powdered sugar. Looking at the locker door again closely. Mm, seems like there are fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Let's see if we can find a clear print. Hmm, fingerprints outside the blood. Here. Oh, sorry, there isn't enough over here or up here. Yay! A print so clear, it's dazzling. Dazzling? Anyway, this print took a lot of effort to find. Let's match it up right away. So we're not done yet? This is quite a process. Well, there's no point in finding a fingerprint and not knowing who the owner is, right? I guess she's right. Look at the fingerprint data we got from Mr. Edgeworth, and point out the person you think left these prints. How am I supposed to know who it was? I could make a pretty good guess. The bloody handprint and the fingerprints are in different places, right? That means that the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So whose fingerprints would, most li would we most likely find on this evidence locker? Phoenix, I love you, but you're kind of a dumbass. I mean, I guess it's like to help those more clueless people who play this, I guess. Aha! So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this so what look. I guess that's probably because I was thinking, so what? Okay, so we came up with nothing this time, but there's always next time. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You gotta roll with the punches, Mr. Wright. Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, if I remember correctly, there was one other handprint in this room. Let's check it out. This is where we got a luminal fluid reaction, right? 
Right. There was a handprint here. Okay. Want to try using this? There go. There go her eyes sparkling again. Yes, check for prints. Okay, let's check for prints. That's the spirit. Oh, but I have to warn you about something first. What? The area with the blood was wiped away, right? We only ended up finding finding it using chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped wiped away too. Oh right, so that means no prints. Did you say the probability of your hypothesis is high? Don't ask me. Or don't ask me, I guess. Anyway, we must try to find prints that weren't wiped away. Prints other than the ones left by the bloody hand. Is it saying dust? Did I did I broke it? Wait, I'm dumb. I need to... There we go. <laughs> hmm. I gave it my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? It doesn't look like we'll get a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger then. So much cocaine. That's a... Uh... That's a joke in all of justice. Okay, here we actually have a finger. to use for the ID card oh my god I mean, you don't really need the entire print as long as you have the centerpiece you should be fine technically speaking I mean hey Marshall Fingerprints, they... Whose are they? Whose? Is it someone I know? It's Officer Marshall. Huh? Officer Jake Marshall? That's gotta be a coincidence. It's not involved in the crime. Emma. This is decidedly different from Detective Gumshoe's prints. Luminal reaction. The blood and the fingerprints are in the same place. Oh. Oh! So we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints on a white blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall? It looks like our investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you'd call decisive evidence. I I don't believe it. Okay, thank God. I need to pee. <laughs> Bathroom break. Yes. Bathroom break. Let me turn on music. Let me turn on music. Enjoy this pretty music while I go to bathroom.
Okay, I'm back. Ha! Huh, I also got some water. Wait, did it say, uh, what day did it say? Day two investigation, so it's day three trial. Then we only have a lot left. <laughs> yeah, it's day three trial. And then we ha we had a three trial former, uh, ladder, and then investigation. And then we have day four trial former, trial ladder part one, pa trial ladder part two. There's seven part there are seven chapters that there's no way I'm gonna be able to finish this. My god. Uh <laughs> I think I may have a bit over more than I can chew with this one. <sighs> That's my worst case scenario, I'll just split it in two, you know. It's not not really that big of a deal. So it's gonna be a long stream. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to like see what I how I how I fare if I get anywhere. I don't know. So what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time, and a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. L Lana. Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So, how'd it go? It's as Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. Plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this, this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana, don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Sky. Hmm? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. It belonged to Officer Jake Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? Blood-stained fingerprints, to be exact. It's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Sky? Well, you have to, Mr. Wright. 
how are you two faring, by the way? I know it's really late, especially for um, for Bengi right now, because she's in Turkey, and it's almost 2 a.m. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is. Hmm. Huh? I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I'm getting used to staying up late with you. Just to go to bed at 11. <laughs> Sh I'm fine. Well, if, if you say so. I don't know. I, I probably I probably won't be able to finish this. Let's be real. It's fine. I have tomorrow too, so... Wow. This is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to pro present impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence re relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait? Very well. Let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls... The suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. Oh no. Oh no, my ears. <laughs> Turning it down. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Pardon? That was disgusting. Will a witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir. I'm Officer Mike Meekin, sir. My occupation is, um, that will be murderer, sir. Ah. Uh, so you're telling us you're a professional killer. Sir, it was me, sir. I'm the one who did it. I'll never kill anyone again, sir. You got to believe me, sir. Ah, uh, actually, what we'd like to hear from you, sir, I'm what you would call a part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. How could I read that, but I can't read like half of the other stuff? Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Help me, sir. Officer Meekins. Yes, sir. Give us your report of the crime. Consider that an order. Yes, sir, as you wish. After all, I am part of the generation that must be told what to do, sir. You can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life. Then I... I did it. After that, I passed out until another officer smacked me awake. Hmm. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you? Do unto to others before they, unto, they do unto you. That's the Meekins family motto, sir. I see. Then you fainted and a co colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir. He knocked me upside the head, sir. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work with. Crime report, sir. Uh, okay. In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. 
So then, your ID number should be listed on here, right? There it is! I found it! This is the one, right here! Could you please read us the number? Yes, sir! It's 49895969! That's my number, sir! I see. Huh. With the number 49895969. Is shown as being used twice. Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to get him, after everything settled down. I see, so it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on, on the security screen. What exactly do you mean when you say you did it? You know, I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched the knife from him. You took his knife? I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood. And then... Then the next thing I knew... Yes. He punched me right in my face, sir. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious. Oh, right. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too. I woke up crying tears of pain. That's nice. Um, I mean, it's nice that you recovered, that is. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir, the blue badger, sir. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. Is this what he was telling us yesterday? Well, we need to try and skim some more details from him, for, for starters. What was an officer from the General Affairs Department doing in there, doing in, there in the first place? Right. Let's press him for all he's worth. Alright, let's press him, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir! I am in charge of hiring new recruits, sir! Yikes, now there's a scary... Th now there's a scary thought. Evidence transfer was taking place in the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir! The blue badger? Yes, sir, the lovely police mascot created by the chief of detectives, sir. I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transfer process. Hell yeah, if we can throw down to this. Yeah! my sole mission for the day, sir. If the club don't play this, I ain't, it ain't worth going. I, don't, I ain't going to the club anyway, so... I see. Sounds like a very uh, important mission. <laughs> be like, hand me the aux cord, and then you play that. <laughs> After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? I totally would just for laughs. <laughs> but it's just, it's just, wait, I already did this one. In order to enter an evidence room, you need an NG card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he spends like ages looking for his number. Already went through, went through this. Whatever. So you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir. A knife. Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you. 
What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be. And I saw the blood trickling down my arm. Panicked! I grabbed the man by his collar. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Um... Yes, Officer Meekins. With regard to that, sir... Take a look at this! It was sent to my jail cell! Chief Gant delivered this to me this morning, sir. The Chief? Delivered it? What is that? A videotape? Yes, sir! It's absolutely right, sir. A videotape, sir. It contains footage from the security camera and the evidence room. Objection! What? But I specifically asked, asked if there was such a tape. I was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Did you notice, by the way, that they finished each other's sentences? That was so cute. <laughs> well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh, please stop using that word murder, sir. It scares me. A video of a real murder. Just what are we getting ourselves into? Not the fucking blue badger just covering his face. <laughs> what kind of angle is that? <laughs> uh, oh, that's so fucking funny. Snap? <laughs> oh my god, yes, you're right. <laughs> I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? What the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? Sir, that's the pride and joy of the entire criminal affairs department, sir. It's the blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Yes, well, anyway, this tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter uh, someone. In the evidence room, and some sort of uh, activity did take place. Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. <laughs> did that badger awaken something within the judge? <laughs> Is that all right with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir. As you wish, sir. When? <laughs> as you wish, sir. Oh, shoot, wait. What is it, Bengi? What do you realize? His face can't be clearly seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir, so it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it. Ah, Meekins reminds me so much of a character from Gumball. Gumball, Gumball, Gumball! <laughs> What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker, equipped with a fingerprint ad activated lock. These locks ensure that both that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That wouldn't mean 
that a victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. these lockers. Is there no other way to open them? No, sir. I myself tried all kinds of methods in the past. We only respond to registered fingerprints, sir. I wonder what kind of methods he's tried. If the man opened the locker's lock, which only responds to its registered fingerprints, then he must be the person the locker was assigned to. Exactly my point, sir. And this too. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video, the man's face. Sir! If I may say something, sir. Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir. My unsubtle state can testify enough to this, sir. Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is... Unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Is there a problem with the security video? There is a problem! I know exactly the problem too, but I want to see, like... Especially Bengi, if you can see it. Regarding the video contained on this tape, there is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the possibility that... The man may not have been Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction? Objection. Interesting. Your Honor, I have a proposal. Oh, oh boy, here it comes, boys! Here it comes! <laughs> yes, Mr. Edgeworth. I propose we have the defense. We have the defense what? We have the defense what? <laughs> Point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. This 100% was on purpose. I can't imagine it not being done on purpose. You would want me to point it out. Very well, proposal accepted. It's not yours to accept, but okay. <laughs> Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. <laughs> that isn't working yet. Uh, I propose we have the defense marry me. <laughs> now we'll now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us this contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video. What? I have to point out a problem in the video? This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. I guess defense is actually written like that if you use like British English or something. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. Please don't play it too many play it too many times. I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that ind indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman?
The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Huh? Yes, that is strange. Something certainly seems unnatural about that. What could it mean? Wait, was it wrong? Sergeant Rock, Mr. Wright. You seem to have forgotten the point of this exercise. He opened it. The point? What you are looking for is one thing and one thing only. Something that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman. Yes? Oh, yeah. Okay, whatever. Place him under arrest. Play video again. Because, like, um... Damn it, I have to go through the entire thing. So if we, if we take a look over here, you see how there is nothing out of this one? You see how there is nothing out of this locker? What my room just made a beep noise and I fucking jumped. Oh no, I'm so sorry. And now suddenly there is something there. That wasn't there before, but anyways, I still I still I still know what it is, so it's fine. That's strange about the videos of this. Objection. What? Point. Oh, play video again. Damn it. I Me, mean, <laughs> I know exactly what to do. Also, me fucks up twice in a row. Maybe I shouldn't have chosen the... Wait, actually... Officer Meekins! Sir! Do you mean me, sir? I did it. As I understand it, the locker apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If it's a match, the light turns on and the lock is released. Wait, I want to see what he has inside his locker. Interesting. Very interesting. Oops. According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. When the victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind to a little earlier. Please, no, God! <laughs> Here, notice the light? What's this? It's already lit! I'll have nightmares with Blue Badger. Precisely my point, Your Honor. That Badger was gonna give me PTSD. I hope you dream about that Blue Badger tonight with that music just on repeat. That's the entire dream. There's nothing else. Just Blue Badger. 
precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the, the handle. Is that a fucking chicken? Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When the door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know! It must have broken down! Of course I'm not an expert in this! It's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. Well, it just goes to show how novices should keep their mouths shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes, why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honor? Yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um, maybe something like jam the system sensor. Something jam the sensor. Say, there's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too. There's gotta be another clue somewhere in this footage. Very well. Let's inspect the video once more. The locker wasn't locked. Okay, whatever. We know that now. Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. Thank God, at least there is no music right now. They were like, no, this is gonna drive everyone insane. <laughs> We'd better not. What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are opened. Even when the badger is no longer on screen, I still hear the music. <laughs> I couldn't even read that. Can't be sure that item was completely inside the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In... Inserted? Bring back the music, please! <laughs> this white thing wasn't inside the locker. <laughs> it was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Instead of the door closing, my tie chokes me. <laughs> What did he say that was so genius? But the object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator, but at the crime scene, there just might have been something that fits the description. But, sir, by insulator, you don't mean... I think I finally got this figured out. Very well, with the defense, please present the relevant element and ev elements and evidence. <laughs> I'm really struggling today, aren't I? What was this insulator? Hmm, D. Do we know what the. Oh, you're mocking him. Hmm, what is, what is the insulator? Ow, back. Obviously, the, the vase. Yes, of course. I found this near the locker. A thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SL9 incidents. The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. That isn't the case. 
The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. This is not so, Officer Meekins. Sir! It would appear so, sir! Order! 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 So are we to believe, then, that the victim, whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room, was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility, and that possi- mm, yes, and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir! M me, sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Oh, you mean that, sir? Of course, sir! Is this a joke? Very well. Begin your testimony. There's one other thing that proves that man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there is a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his ID his card. <laughs> his ID it's card, yes. An ID card record, I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime, hmm. Huh? Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transfer. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Why the hell does Edgeworth have a locker then? Hearing that makes my hair stand on, stay, stay, stay. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too. Although it doesn't make much. Although it doesn't make much of a difference, I accidentally turned off my my mom. Uh, there were only a few cases up for transfer there, and most were cleared up by noon. Right, I see. Now let's move on to the cross-examination. <laughs> oh. BMAF? You mean Banff? <laughs> Earlier, I believe it testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir! He didn't show me any ID card, sir! Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card, all he had to do was show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. M maybe he just panicked! Everything stems from contradictions. Let's point them out. Mr. Wright, what do you think? I'm confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is far too obvious. It's not like Edgeworth to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we got. Hmm. Okay, cool, it was that. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. 
the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. Our last item report, it's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess, you believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high possibility. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Order! Order! So now, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't even require much thought. The man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order! 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 Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. I was just waiting. <laughs> Bravo, Mr. Wright. Bravo? Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15 p.m. on the day of the McCrime. Of the of the McCrime. <laughs> McCrime? <laughs> the man in the evidence room Officer Meekins encountered was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Marry me defense. <laughs> Second, the victim lost his ID card. <laughs> Why are you just singing pina coladas again? Oh my god. Am I correct so far, Miss Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, and the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Uh, that is... Well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago you seemed content to be pointing your fingers around. This isn't going to end well. Oh well, it seems you finally realized. Exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. The defense has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means the murder did not take place at the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So... So the real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot. At the prosecutor's office, the murderer being Miss Lanner Skye, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness observed the moment the defendant used the murder weapon. Ugh! I believe... I can tell from the music that it, it's probably... Kind of likely that we're about to go into like um, uh, recess. I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekins encountered? And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something or else Lana... What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Object. Objection. One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not, but I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. 
What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. The defense demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident at the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh, whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. In the evidence room, yeah. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have testified, what is his or her name? Take that! Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let Edgeworth know anything, everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense requests. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. The court will take a 30 minute recess. While the witness is subpoenaed. What? How do. Hold on. Hold on, wait. We'll be over my dictionary app. <laughs> How in the. Sub. Po. Po. Subponade. <laughs> Sub. Subpoena. Okay. Subpoena. Subpoena. Subpoena, okay. Well, the witness is subpoenaed. Judge has a halo. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court is now in recess. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured anything out. Lana, you're the one who knows everything. Emma, you always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I, I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. I get that recess means break, but I can only think of school recess. <laughs> the judge running out to the playground! <laughs> I think of uh, the Disney show recess. I used to love that show. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. No, he was so sad! Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? 
You got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it all top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people people at funerals. Oh yeah, that one. I think I still have a DVD of the movie. There was a movie? I mean I probably actually knew about the movie. I just kind of forgot. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey! 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 I didn't see you there, Chief Prosecutor Sky. That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? Oh. Oh! <laughs> you mean this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I have would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, I might do well to read them. I can't believe you. But the chief prosecutor were a witness in that case. This guy was a witness? Take it from me, you don't want anything to do with serial murders. Okay, but I want to check this. The nine closed. Perpetrator Joe Dark. Crime serial murder. Sentence death. Alright, victims. Edward Jones. Edith Kirby. Jeb Bates. Jason Knight. Rachel Moss. Neil Marshall. Trial data. Head prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Proud of you, my boy. Witnesses. Lana Sky. Emma Sky. Emma Sky. Interesting. Investigation Task Force, Executive Investigators, Damon Gant, Lana Sky. Head Investigator, Bruce Goodman, Investigators, Jake Marshall, Angel Star. Hmm, a lot of names I recognize here. Oh, what? Now that I've brought you your stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? Emma, but why? Why is your name in here? What? My name's in there? I don't know. Unless... No, it couldn't be. Lana, this SL9 incident, is that... That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... The Joe Dark Killings. Oh yeah, you mentioned Neil Marshall. I mean... Yeah, family matters. <laughs> Probably, anyway. The... Joe Dark. No, no, Lana! That's over with! No! Emma, wait! She ran away. Uh, you know what? I just remembered. I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Damon Gant, Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I'd better take a good look at this file. The plot thickens, the plot thickens indeed. I want to finish this trial at the very least. Before I end it today. That means I only... Damn it, I only have four episodes left because it's the... It's the it's the thing with the thing and the... Th but the, 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 yes, it's the investigations after this. And then there is a trial former and trial ladder and trial ladder. So yeah, there are like I'm like halfway through the episode now then. And I'm almost seven hours in, though to be fair, I've been kind of all over the place this stream. <laughs> Of 
court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Well, I'm just a man, same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know, you're a patrolman. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howling wind calling it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, your honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the on the day of the time <laughs> on the day the crime took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? Desperado's soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us your testimony on of the day of the crime. In plain old English. I don't think the judge likes western movies very much. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. They say it was supposed to make around three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, that room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at the street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. Can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activated locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines or with following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses, now don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Who, Edgeworth? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Okay. What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Not even angel steak lunches can beat that parlor's Bungoli bon Sapia pasta. What the hell? You mean to tell us? You abandoned your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this has at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is, this is usually where Edgeworth says, you do not want to race this year. <laughs> Were they good noodles though? You made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? I told you that ain't my style. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. No desperado I know lets rules get in his way. No desperados I know join the police force. So, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime? Just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. There was a rubber glove stuck in the victim's locker. Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner. Can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? You used to be a detective, so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day, my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism. Sorry, partner. I ain't good with machines. I couldn't even tell you how a back works. That's quite, uh, incredible. The sensors on the locker cannot, handles cannot be seen. 
It is well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Now that he mentions it, Detective Gumshoe said something like that too. At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? Remember Rad, it was in the streets as a living room, okay. Out of ammo, Officer Marshall? That's right, partner. Or as you call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me on this to this crime, but you better draw. Otherwise, you're just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset. Hmm, one thing seems clear. Despite being responsible for guarding the evidence room, the witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Texans don't take orders from anyone. Everyone knows that. Apparently, your superiors don't. Okay, I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I'd best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I'd better up the ante. Yeah, I, I have his prints, but, uh... Hmm. How exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved on, on, in the security camera monitor. That room's so still. Even Tan dies in there. I was just a caretaker who interred the recordings. You interred them? Videos of nothing aren't that useful. When the time would come, I'd erase the tape. Nothing unusual is recorded. Tapes are to be erased every six hours. Each time I'd erase a tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy has a flair for the dramatic, but it isn't going to do him any good. So in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room. Hmm. Yeah, the trump card. Before I use it, I better up the ante. I mean, I can always try. It's not really that big of a deal, to be honest. That's not it. Objection. That one. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called in to testify like this. After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet you drag me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or to be exact, the handprints. Hm. Listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crypt. I pay my respects. That is... Make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. Okay. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Witness! What's the meaning of this? Your blood-stained fingerprints were at the crime scene. The blood was wiped away. However, the luminol test clearly revealed this. Well, officer marshal? It seems to me... There ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation, then, Officer Marshall. About the blood stain. Oh, about the. <laughs> about the blood stained fingerprints? Very well. You may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. I forgot they were bloody, actually. Found at the scene of the crime. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the blood-stained handprint. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The blood stain on the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Why didn't you know the murderer was, we was wearing gloves? 
See, I had nothing to do with it. Hmm. The witness ex witness's explanation ex appears valid. Although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy is hiding something. I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. How did he know about the gloves? Exactly my thoughts. How do you know that? Maybe a loner, but I still do my job. Keep up on the reports. It was a bloodstain at the scene, thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. And yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's hanger handprint. That's only the logical conclusion. Can't let him squirm out of this one. I've got to find something. Something decisive to tie Officer Marshall to this crime. So then, what about the bloody handprints? More than mine, it's no mystery. Please explain. The locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. The chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward from me with the mere fingerprints. You wanna know why? Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kinda like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast, while the other's a type of murder. He's right. Although seemingly alike, they're totally different. I don't see what homonyms have to do with this. Because you, how'd you put it, pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently his fingerprints print data was never removed from that locker's program. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without even knowing it. Ever knowing it. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? This seal of blood. In the desert it's just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. Security tape. So long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. <clears throat> this isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me in that video, right, partner? The witness, okay, whatever. I guess I have to press. It's fine. What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this cram, isn't that right, partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera is panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, they could leave the room without being caught on tape. Objection! We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. 
well, Mr. Wright. If you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Show evidence. Cool. This is what I wanted to do. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Here we go. Get ready. Get ready to just turn it up. Show us this incri incriminating evidence. Yes! Music time! Yeah! Okay, this is the one that I pointed out the first time. Where does he go? Does she just like crawl on the ground? Like after this? Does he just like shimmy it along the floor? Because we never actually know like exactly where the camera is. <laughs> Almost dropped the phone on my face. What do you mean? On oh, my face. Okay, I was like. There. How's that for evidence? Please allow me to apologize for my colleague, Your Honor. He gets carried away sometimes. Yes, well, this certainly isn't the first. Can you forgive him too, Officer Marshall? He's not a bad man, just a bit disillusioned. Of course, I'm not one to gun down on our boys. Oh, great. Now Edgeworth is defending me. Guess that means I missed the mark. Fuck, do I need to... Uh, it's so strange at times. Okay, here we go again. You know what? Next time it shows up, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save. this if this is not it then I don't know <laughs> call like this chauffeur business place husband bringing our attention back to the security camera it's a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon f not forget officer Marshall the days are short in Texas and so are our tempers could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less very well you can clearly be seen in this video. Okay, that was actually eight words. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. That locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the, the, rewind the video of it. Mm. Oh, the white cloth. It's gone. What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. And it suddenly appeared. There is only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Order! Order! It would seem that... Hold your horses. Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. 
murderer needed to hide something, so he opened a locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he happened to choose mine. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call you a bluff. You say I opened that locker, now prove it. A fingerprint sensor? We talked about this earlier today. Lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the port that don't know about the fingerprints lo fingerprint locks. So, sure. What do you have to say in eight words or less? I only got one word for you, partner. No! Order! 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 Witness! Explain yourself! This is a joke. It's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the, in the evidence room at this time of the crime. Ole! Please answer the question. What is he now, a bullfighter? That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can? Have a look at these floor plans. There is no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Who is who at the at this point? I'm confused. <laughs> save either. Meekins is killed. Oh, of course he is. I'm dumb. Officer Marshall was standing right here. There, but that's... That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you, dressed up like Detective Goodman. That's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. And may I point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. He entered the evidence room. I asked him to show his card, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me. Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it! If he showed that, his cupboard would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized that the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Are you sure? You know, I feel like he would just like, kind of like, oh, okay. No, you know, yeah, no, you totally look like this dude. Either that, or he would be like, well, this doesn't look like you, sir. And then Marshall could have just been like, yeah, but, um... I gained some weight, you know. <laughs> you got a nice tan, Goodman. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs>
You could kill Meekins? Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? Or you could kill Meekins and he wouldn't realize until he arrives in the afterlife. <laughs> okay, yeah, I get that. You got quite an imagination, partner. We got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. Can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Wow, he used the same thing twice. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the, the desert heat. This can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? Hmm. It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics? For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside of the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. Or rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then, after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that. He opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps... Perhaps the video is the key to all our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Very well, let's take yet another look at that security tape. Oh, here we go again. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put away the white cloth. Okay. No. Please show us why the witness had to open his locker. Nothing on his body, right? There was nothing that's like... And that we found outside of his locker, so it can't be that. actually be onto something. Maybe it is the costume. I don't remember. It's been so long. Bloody coat? Okay, I'm gonna just rewind all the way back to the beginning. Or like... Oh, 
what do you have to say to that? All right, partner. You really want to know the reason I had to open my locker? Why? So I could stuff you in there. Uh-huh. Sure, the world would be a better place with you sent off to the boneyard. Fortunately, unsolved cases can't be stored in the evidence room. Now, I'm an unsolved case? Something was wrong in that evidence room. I'm sorry, Marshall. No, you're totally right. It has to do with the... Okay, you know what? This takes so fucking long. Oops, wrong button. see that the first time for some reason. For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room. Though I don't know what to what end yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked. The white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat! You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, partner. Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, now will we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did. All of it. Alright. Seems the time has come. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. Stole the detective's ID card and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. I managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught up on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It was way too much blood for such a small donation. <laughs> okay. When you say it, you mean... Do you even have to ask pardon? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That, in that incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transferal, It'd be a, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out that lost item report. 
I returned this ID card. Wait, I don't have... Um... Mm -hmm. Not that. Where is the thing? There we go. I wanted to add the timestamps. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker yourself. But he could, because the rubber glove just happened to get stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. I'm just pressing everything. You pulled the knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is one in a million type of a person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. I'll have to think a little more about his race this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. Sorry it had to turn out that way. Took me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Hmm. Huh. So you knocked Officer Meekins out and... Managed to escape. So you did your research beforehand. Those who go into the desert and prepare don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. The security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you blooded your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during the time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is, on that day... There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. But the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim shown on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is that evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Far away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injur injuring a police officer. This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. You can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case, this one is mine, and I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm, the witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. Can't just forget the SL ins SL9 incident, you know why? But that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted of his crimes. For his crimes. The only thing I can say for sure is he deserved his sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how it turned out. But 
there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one will talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think his real reason is. Okay, I know exactly what it is. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have here the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard of the name. Two years ago. You received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prose Prosecutors award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. <laughs> I remember. Prosecutor Neil, Neil Marshall, why can't I not say his fucking name? He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right, he was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's this, his relation to you? He was my brother. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, the then deputy chief of police. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least according to the public record. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it. That's your reason for your insane actions. There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could have could be reopened. Not satisfied with its resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman as he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Mrs. Mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. The things that happened by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's gotta be more than just that. So if Noah was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Scott. But, but wait! A verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial! Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But... There's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the sim simultaneous murder at the police department. Seems to me this boy's got the draw on your partner. All of the mysteries at the police department have been resolved, no doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Skye. And the testimony of one Miss Angel star is completely incontestable. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Ugh. I rest my case. 
It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Just proving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The, the apparent murder on the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize. That would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... Your Honor, wait! Emma! The defense has an objection. A scientific objection. Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright! Are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor? Oh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor. All I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. I'll give you three. I can't speak. I I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident refers to the Joe jo Dark killings. Now that she mentions it, the names of both Sky, both Sky sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. So generous, Edgy. That left only one thing, the other handprints. I mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So I ran over there and looked at it again. So, did you find something? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad, I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them. Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. With regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um, it appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Yes, Your Honor. If ever I've needed to concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with that handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? I object. Objection! This handprint left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is your grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean, something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blue- of the blue- of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's gotta be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plans? What we thinking, boys? Badger. Take that. What about that piece of plywood? 
The blue badger, mascot of the mascot of the police force. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? That's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here, it will be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. So that means... Uh, just exactly what does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces are undeniably found at that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma! On that afternoon... Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it will be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Just one moment. I will not allow such far-fetched balderdash in my courtroom. It may sound for far-fetched, Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. But how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been. It had to have been. Detective Goodman! When he was really murdered. That's ridiculous. I refuse to accept your absurd claim. The murder portrayed in the security tape has proven to, been to, proved to be a fake. However, it does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize, the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in that evidence room. That's right, the blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us, when did this first incident occur, as Mr. Edgeworth said? Proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that could show that. Now then, will the defense please present its evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? <sighs> okay. thinking this ID card record Fleur, are you looking at a guide? <laughs> if the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh, the ID card record. Actually not, okay. Good for you then. Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room. But let's just see here, 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be 4.40 p.m. Ah! Ah! Miles Edgeworth, just what have you done? 
I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm, I am afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test that the blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. But so did you! <laughs> that means the blood from the first crime was wiped away. By the real murderer. I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That wouldn't mean... The crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. The only one... The only one other card... card phew, the only one other card number remaining. S just a bunch of sevens. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there is no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with 77777 whatever. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find out whose ID number is 77777777. That's one seven too many, Your Honor. I don't even know how many sevens I said. <laughs> Unfortunately, I am unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number 77777777 belongs to someone with the rank of captain or higher. Someone who is a so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's ident identity. But that's ridiculous. Just how... I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against their executive is, is accepted. An official charge. You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. Operates. Operates? Operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Yes? No, not you. To her. The defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number. And it's not 77777777. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident. And some with this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago. Did you really only use legitimate evidence? Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? Cuter. I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At that time, we occasionally felt the powerlessness of the law. At least I did. L Lana! I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime by the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. By the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me and look me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to. In order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana! Even if it involved forging evidence. C-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-
See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! Order! 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 Lana's remarks caused such a stir. The chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial would have to wait until the following day. Eight hours. And we're halfway. <laughs> I don't think I will spend eight hours ending it though, but uh, I'm gonna end it here, actually. See your process. Yeah, sure. Are you progressing? Sorry. I'm gonna continue this tomorrow. Despite it probably ruining my voice, I'm fine. <laughs> this is such a long case. It is. <clears throat> Let me just uh, turn this on. Again. Uh, so, yeah, what I have to do now is just... Once this is over, I'm gonna have to start uploading this to YouTube. And uh, it will be done in a few hours, I guess. And then I have to skim through the entire thing and add chapters because I did that to the last three episodes. It is, it is a fun case. It is a, it is an okay one, but it's also kind of annoying at points. I don't know. Huh. But it's fun considering like you get like new gameplay. Like um. There is the... Um, there is... What is it called? The, the Luminol? For one. And uh, there is... Uh, how you can rotate sperm detection. <laughs> how you can rotate evidence now. And uh, there is also the fingerprint powder thing. The cocaine. Fish guts. Owl eyes. Yes. <clears throat> it was fun though. I uh I had a lot of fun, at least. <laughs> at the very least. Sorry, I went to cover up that the sunglasses <laughs> fnaf face attorney edition oh because of uh, because of the camera i get it i get it i get it i get it <laughs> uh that one camera in fnaf one that just like pans back and forth all the time mm -hmm. and the music yes <laughs> you're just like waiting for a jump scare and the badger. I don't think there's a badger in, in FNAF. <laughs> it's etched into my head. <laughs> His flag looked like an axe. You know what? I need, I need to go and uh, find like a picture of the blue badger. And like use its head and add it as an emote. I should have like added uh, some, like one emote. But, like, because I'm not, um, I guess it doesn't show up because, you know, I'm not an affiliate or a partner yet, which is fair, I guess. But I, I, I added an emote with better TTV, but uh, I don't know if it actually works if you don't have that extension in your browser. I don't know how it works exactly. Though it should technically, technically it should work. Let me just uh, check something real quick here. If I do. It works. It doesn't work in the chat, but it but it, but it works in, in that chat, but it doesn't work like in my 
chat box on on the on the screen, but like on the on the, on the stream, it works. Oh, oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's perfect. I love that. So yeah, I'm gonna maybe someone else has already done it, so I can like add it too. That would be cool, anyways. But yeah, I'm I I have to I have to add a blue badger. Also, I, I want to add something else. Uh, I'm thinking of the uh, Phoenix's badge, which is why I took a screenshot of it earlier in the stream, <laughs> because I wanted it to be like front facing. <laughs> Look at this photograph. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's amazing. I'm. I had a great time though. Uh, got like Ace Attorney with like a side of mukbang. It was it was wonderful. <sighs> so cozy, yes, indeed. It was it was very nice. I'm also wearing a really cozy sweater today. Can't really see it well on the stream, unfortunately, because the camera just doesn't really pick it up very well. But it's like this fuzzy green sweater. Or green hoodie, I guess you could say. And uh, I feel really comfortable and warm, and I really like that. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sleepy too. Why is Careless Whisper playing in your heads? <laughs> that's that's kind of weird. Also, I, it's it's so cool. We, I I got like three new followers today. That's that's so cool. I love that. Maybe it's time for sleeps. Yeah, it probably is. Ah, annoying me. I'm probably gonna go <laughs> play some Apollo Justice before I fall asleep. No, no idea. My brain is like a playground. You know what? I can, I can relate to that. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for for being here. And thanks to you guys for just just always being here for me when I'm when I'm live. I I, I love that so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. And it, and, and having you here makes this experience so much more fun. Despite it going on for eight hours. <laughs> You're very welcome. I am very glad I could be your Saturday entertainment. Well, I'm waiting. I'm uh... Ah, cool. I still didn't get that. That. That, um. Command to work properly. It's fine. Stream of time is unknown Twitch channel. I tried. <laughs> Thanks to Meekings for being a great officer. Yes. Officer of the year. <laughs> huh? <sighs> ah, okay. Anyways. Applause all around. <laughs> a round of applause. <laughs> Ah. Good night, guys. I uh, hope to finish this case tomorrow. Hopefully won't take this long. I doubt it. I just really spent like a lot of time this time. Uh, but I don't think it should take this long for like the last stretch. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for, for being here. For me and uh, I hope you have a great night and we will talk tomorrow bye 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 good night bye <laughs>